I call to order the regular session of the Board of Commissioners of the City of Tarpon Springs on Tuesday, August 23, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. Um, before we get uh, into the roll call, I, we received a uh, memorandum from Commissioner Carr requesting that he be re uh, excused this evening uh, due to an illness. I'd like to have a motion and a second to excuse Commissioner Carr, please. Motion to excuse Commissioner Carr. Second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Fuyas? Yes. Commissioner Eisner? Yes. Vice Mayor Lund? Yes. Mayor Vadikiotis? Yes. I also want to announce that uh, item 14, request to negotiate development agreement application 2296, choice hotels, uh, has been deferred uh, to a time to be determined. Um, roll call, please, for the regular meeting. Mayor Vadikiotis? Here. Vice Mayor Lund? Here. Commissioner Carr is absent and excused. Commissioner Eisner? Here. Commissioner Kouyas? Here. This evening's invocation will be uh, by Reverend Lisa Bradford of the Church in the Bayou. And uh, if we can stand, and then after the invocation, turn and do our Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Please pray with me. Gracious God, we thank you for the privilege of living in this beautiful city we thank you for the gift of democracy, messy, complicated. We ask God that there would be pervasive wisdom and integrity in this room and that persons would leave here this evening feeling respected and heard. We ask all of this in your name, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we go to public comments, we have a uh, special presentation this evening by the library board uh, concerning their annual report. If um, someone from the library board would like to come forward. And, if all of you that are here for that, if you could just stand, please, so people could recognize how many people we have for that uh, presentation. We've got quite support for, uh, quite a bit of support for our library here in Tarpon Springs. Thank you. Go ahead. My name is Valerie Chulu, and I am the chair of the library board, and I would like to thank the mayor and the commissioners for the opportunity to share the library's 25th anniversary year with you this evening. We have a great board and staff doing incredible things in our community. Um, it is my honor to be here tonight as the chair of the library board. Unfortunately, several of our board members were not feeling well tonight and will be watching online. We do have Eileen Scott, um, who is our board secretary, Carrie Rupkalvis, our library director, um, Denise Manning, who was recently promoted to Librarian 2, she's been with us a long time, and our newest member, um, Julie Baker, our new Operating Coordinator. <clears throat> As a board, we were blessed to be able to participate in many events this year. Here are a couple pictures from the Christmas Parade. Um, they're hard to see, but we also completed a community survey to assist with updating the library's policies and strategic plan, and we're looking forward to implementing some needs and wants from our community feedback. A few special programs that we implemented this year. One, to celebrate our 25th anniversary, we're doing silver ticket promotion. Um, you will find these silver tickets around the library and many of the items that you can check out. Um, if you turn them in, you'll receive a prize. Prizes include coffee mugs, frisbees, notepads, books, etc. cetera. Um, for our special collections, we expanded with tablets for kids, musical instruments, crafts, and steam kits for both kids and adults. The tablets were preloaded with educational games so the parents don't have to worry about security. Um, the craft kits were a big hit with all ages. Um, the craft kits, you can go by there, pick up a kit, Everything's included in it. You do your craft with the books, um, keep your craft, and just return the extra supplies and instructions. Um, we started a seed library for sustainability where you can pick up a seed packet and take it home and plant it. Um, 
This week we had volunteers from the Pinellas County Supervisor of Elections to collect mail ballots, um, and they will be back for the um, general election too. Um, summer reading programs for all ages resumed this year. The in adults actually really enjoyed the um, bingo pr and prizes for reading. Um, we had some educational programs start again, um, Spear Bubble Show and Mad Science. Um, that we also did some plays at the Cultural Center. Um, new this summer is the State Park Pass, which allows you to go into the library, use your library card, pick up a pass so you can go to the state parks for free. This ends on September 12th, so I encourage you to hurry by and grab a pass. Um, we also have, again, the museum passes, and we have three new museums coming to the passes, um, Florida Craft Art, St. Petersburg Museum of History, and Safety Harbor Museum. Um, our online resources are continuing to expand with eBooks, music, and movies, um, all accessed through your library card. Our librarian, Denise Manning, has expanded the genealogy program and is teaching us a ton about family history and using genealogy software. Um, also, we're excited the Career Online High School program is back, and we had just this week two new students sign up, so we're hoping to come back again and celebrate their graduation. Um, collaboration has increased with the Tarpon Arts. The library hosted the Young Arts Reception at the Cultural Center this year. We have a lot of talent in our community. Um, you could, very tiny up there, but you can't see all the participants. Um, with the City Sustainable Coordinator, City Arborist, and City Waterways Coordinator, the library sponsored an Earth Day event where we were able to give away grab-and-go kits, which allowed people to take home a pot with the plants and grow them at home, and hoping to get that to be much bigger next year. We also had the Pinellas County Juvenile Welfare Board bus at the library, um, allowing the kids to go on the bus one at a time and pick out books. Um, our biggest supporter, the library, is so blessed to have the friends of the library. We appreciate their generosity and dedication to the library. Um, they opened up their used bookstore again, and 100% um, of their proceeds are going to support the library events. Their annual meeting is coming up September 23rd, and Chris Still is going to be their guest speaker. Okay. Since it's our 25th anniversary, we put together a video. Okay, to continue the celebration, the library is going to have an anniversary party on September 17th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., and everybody's welcome. Um, as we move into the next year, we're looking forward to new additions and improvements to the library with self-service options, study spaces, and more. Um, we have reapplied for our state grant with cresting $500,000 in funding to assist with the improvements. 
And September coming up is library card sign up. There will be special photograph contests for children, teens, and adults. The categories will be local and literary with monetary prizes sponsored by the Friends of the Library. Um, and the winners will be on display in the library for the month of October. And in closing, the Tarpon Springs Public Library mission is to provide excellent library and information services, fulfill the needs of the users, enhance their quality of life, and be a focal point in the community. Thank you again for your support and the opportunity to share and serve. Um, thank you very much. Um, the library always, at least for me, has had a warm spot in my heart. Um, it was a labor of love when it was built uh, 25 years ago. Uh, Mrs. Scott is one member of that group of 23 residents that actually helped design uh, the library and put it together that year. Um, I was city manager at the time that year. There were no sidewalks put in uh, Tarpon Springs, and the reason why the roads and streets crews, all the, sign, all the cement work for that year went into doing all the cement work around the uh, library. Um, that's, we bartered that with a con contractor just to try and save money. Many of the features that you see inside the library uh, were donated at that time. And I'm very much looking forward to um, you completing your internal improvements, the $500,000 estimate of improvements, and then at some point in the future expanding the footprint of our library to something larger. So thank you very much. Um, let me um, see if any of the commissioners would like to have any comments. Uh, Vice Mayor Lunt. Um, I'd like to open it up to the public. I know there's a couple of people here that were here 25 years ago that might want to say something about the, uh, the library. Are there any public comments? Um, IT, are there any uh, public comments? We'll be allowed to talk. No. And we do and not we have, have any raised hands, hands at this time, sir. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you very much for your presentation. Okay, we're going to go on to um, public comments. And uh, before we get started, um, we have a couple of items this evening that I know um, um, somewhat stir the, the, the emotions of many of our residents. I would suspect there's usually a meeting that doesn't go by with something like that. I want to announce that August, although we didn't do a proclamation, is National Civility Month. <laughs> and I would ask for your, uh, your comments uh, this evening to be respectful and kind before we get started this month. So I'd like to go in, uh, start with public comments. Please come forward. Chris Roboski, 1602 Gulf Beach Boulevard, Tarpon Springs, 34689. I'm here to give you another update on Mr. Clay Colson's uh, lawsuits uh, with the city. Uh, he's trying to save the 74 acres on the Ann Clote River from being developed by the Morgan Group. So you can check the docket online for the Sixth Judicial Circuit to look at the documents that, that are there, but you cannot check the second DCA. So now more than ever, you have to rely upon your legal team to provide you with this information. Now, I can provide you with the documents, and I will. We're trying to post them all online, but I would hope that you guys were just going to be given this information so that you can see what the city attorney has been representing you, uh, what, are you what, what he's saying, what, what they're doing, I'm telling you that they misrepresented the truth to a judge in court. And Mr. Clay Colson is uh, drafting uh, a complaint to the bar also an ethics complaint. Um, and he's opened the city to uh, civil rights action because he's deprived, he's, he's saying that Mr. Colson doesn't have his First Amendment right to gather news. And his trial, his hearing was newsworthy. And he was recording it. And then the judge told him, no, you can't do that. And then on behalf of the city, now the city says he can't either. That's not right. He has his First Amendment right to do this. And so this is going to the Florida Supreme Court. If the second DCA files against, or judges against Clay, it's going to the Florida Supreme Court. 
and then it can literally go to the U.S. Supreme Court because it's a First Amendment case. Now, the Star Chamber Justice stuff in the dark that the DCA is playing around with, I have no doubt that they will probably file and find against Mr. Colson. So it will go. Hopefully, after tonight, they'll wake up. So while he was researching his bar complaint, he called all the cities that I asked you to call. That's why I asked you to call because he found out some information that you would have found out if you had contacted Madeira Beach, St. Pete Beach, and Dunedin. Clay is not the only one to file uh, one of these bar complaints. Let me read to you. In July, October, and November 2021, City Attorney Trask presided over a quasi-judicial rezoning hearing in Madeira Beach and two quasi-judicial hearings in Tarpon Springs. In those meetings, his actions demonstrated that he ignored or affirmatively affirmatively interfered with due process rights of citizens. In each case, City Attorney Trask knew that the proposed rezonings and land use matters were unlawful. Equally urgent is the fact that City Attorney Trask intentionally failed to advise the Madeira Beach and Tarpon Springs City Government that the land use actions, which they were about to approve and then did approve, were unlawful. He had personal knowledge that the law as applied to the facts of the quasi-judicial hearing over which he presided did not comply with the city ordinances or the city comprehensive plans. These unlawful decisions continue to create great public harm by permitting land use matters to be approved despite the fact they are unlawful. Land is not fungible and future decisions by City Attorney Trask on land use matters would continue his, this harm to the public if the Florida Bar does not first review the unequivocal evidence of alleged violations below. Rules of Professional Conduct 4-1.4b, duty to explain matters to a client. A lawyer shall explain a matter to the extent reasonably necessary to permit the client to make informed decisions regarding the representation. A city attorney is required to inform a commission as to the applicable law on matters that may come before the government body, including advice to whether their action will violate the city's code. And I've heard the buzzer. I'm just going to wrap up by saying um, this is posted online now. Okay, the, the Mad Beach people gave it to uh, Mr. Colson, uh, and then I got a copy of it. I posted it on our website. Uh, SaveTarponSprings.org. I would ask you all to read it and do something about it. Also, one last thing. Mr. Colson asked that I come here and ask that trash be removed from here doing his case. He's not being treated fairly, nor are the citizens of Tarpon Springs. There are, com there are complete conflicts of interest. So if, if you're not going to ask the man to resign, you could at least put out an RFP to find somebody that might do a better job and or at least ask him to no longer handle the Colson Mr. case. Thank Robosky. you. Thank you. Um, as I hold on, Mr. Geddes, uh, as I stated last time, I was going to ask if there's any comments concerning any individual up here from the public. I'd give that individual an opportunity to comment if they choose to. Uh, Mr. Trask, do you have any comments? I've been representing local governments for over 30 years. I stand by the work that I've done. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Geddes, please come forward. Thank you, Mayor. Just quickly, uh, thank you for all your efforts at the library. I, I do a lot of studying down there, and I I'm grateful um, to have that opportunity. Um, David uh, Ballard Geddes, Jr., I live at Georgia Avenue down the street in Palm Harbor. In effect, the preamble to this Constitution states that we, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish this Constitution to secure the blessings of liberty for ourselves and to, pro to promote our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Again, the preamble of our current constitution reveals two constitutions, one being posterity of the other. 
two separate constitutions, one requisite of the other as qualified in Article I, Section 2 of this Constitution. Are also, Article VI of this Constitution reveals this Constitution as under this Constitution. Two different thises are being used in Article VI. If such is the case, and it is, then what we have is an ad hoc case of constitutional hypocrisy based on dissension in regards to our water supply. And this dissension is claiming itself as a due process in the 14th Amendment. Um, and again, I believe that this issue um, of uh, concealing one constitution under another constitution, a constitutional cover-up operation in regards to uh, the water supply and giving rise to such uh, water supply uh, powers at B, so to speak, using maritime law in Article 3, Section 2, giving rise to such fact needs to be uh, called into question. Uh, thank you again. Thank you, Mr. Geddes. Are there any other public comments? Um, IT, are there any uh, remote access public comments? If anyone online, online would like to make a public, public comment, comment, please raise your hand and you'll, you'll be allowed to talk. talk. And we do not have any raised hands at this time, sir. Thank you. Um, we do have one email that uh, needs to be read into the record, um, Mrs. Jacobs. This email is from Lindsay Ingus, 1502 Poinsettia Avenue. I'd like to address the high traffic and the speed of the cars traveling through Poinsettia Avenue. Residents on this street have raised concerns about the several times to no avail. Nothing has been done in years. There are several children that live on the street and the speed and amount of traffic pose a serious threat to their safety. The residents on the street would like speed bumps installed or would like the street not to be used as a through street and have signs posted and barricades put up like there are on the street near Fred Howard Park. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. LaCourse, could we follow up with the well, individual? The, the oh, police action team's already, when we saw that, they're already on it and have contacted and are working on it. Thank you, Mr. LaCourse. Okay, that's it for public comments. Let's move on to the uh, Consent, oh, I'm sorry, yes, ma'am. It's, it's okay, I apologize, I just had a procedure, so I'm a little Could, could you pull the microphone down a little closer so we can hear you? So I had a comment, um, which I wanted to find out about. Um, I was informed it was either a month ago or about two months ago in one of these proceedings concerning um, fines um, and liens against property that if someone in the family had passed who owned the property, um, that, that that lien or fine goes to the family to pay off that debt. So I wanted to find out from you all, is that the case where the family will still need to pay off the family member's debt or their, their lien it, on the it, property? Is that the end of your comments or? It is. Okay, um, all I can um, ask is for the city manager to get the appropriate staff member to contact you. If you could give us your name and address, um, if you could state your name and address. Okay, hi everyone, my name is Carla Burroughs and my address is 711 South Distant Avenue in Tarpon Springs. We'll have somebody contact you, is that all right? But thank you very much, ma'am. There are no other public comments. We're going to move to the uh, move on to the uh, consent agenda. Um, item one is attorneys' fees. A. Trash Dagnall invoice August first, two thousand twenty-two. B. Johnson and Jackson PLLC invoice nine seven three nine. Item two is special events. A. Homecoming parade on October seventh, two thousand twenty-two. B. <laughs> Brutoberfest, <laughs> I've got that right. October 15th, 2022. C, Outdoor Music Festival, um, October 29th, 2022. And item D, the Thanksgiving Arts and Crafts Festival, November 26, 
uh, through 27th, 2022. Let me just go through this quickly. The um, homecoming parade is, is um, our high school uh, that is um, the sponsor on that. Brutoberfest is the Tarpon Merchant Association. The Outdoor Music Festival is our uh, band boosters. Uh, and also the Thanksgiving Arts and Crafts Festival is our Chamber of Commerce. Uh, item three, award file number 220173-CJL, fencing gate operations and handrails utilizing Pinellas County contract. Item four, award file number 220168-N-AS, single source purchase of Houston polyethylene sodium hydroxide tanks. Item five, approved fiscal year 2023 audit plan. And item, I'm sorry, that was item five. Item six, approve emergency medical services, ALS first responder agreement. Um, do any of the commissioners wish to pull any of these items? I hear none. May I have a motion and a second to approve these, please? Motion to approve. I'll second. Are, th are there any public comments on any of these items? Chris Roboski, 1602 Gulf Beach Boulevard, Tarpon Springs, 34689. So we've spoken about the attorney's fees. Um, I just wanted to say this so I've got people looking into this. And uh, there's much debate over whether we can do what is known as a key TAM. It's Q-U-I-T-A-M, for those of you who want to Google it. Some say that it cannot be done uh, for a municipality, but some are saying that it can. We're also looking into something you know, something, it's basically something like a class action suit to get the money back to the citizens that was taken for overbilling. So it would be nice if we didn't have to do this, but since the city doesn't seem like it's going to do anything about it, um, we're going to take this matter into our own hands. Now, each attorney that we've asked said that it would be simpler for the commission to simply say X amount of money repay the citizens, please. And they said, cut the check, because they don't want this litigated. So you guys could ask them to pay back some money. You don't have to go back 20 years or whatever it is. Just, I mean, even the key TAM thing is only like three or five years or something. So, you know, you pick a number, you say, hey, you know, this is what we feel is fair. They get to counter offer or whatever, or do nothing and then we'll, do it ourselves. Um, I did want to read something else from this document. In his last stint as a city attorney here, the city paid $135,000 in legal fees to my lawyers after it violated the Sunshine Law and public records law based upon the faulty advice of Tom Trask. Trask also permitted the city to indemnify officials for violations of the Florida Ethics Code, which was also illegal. Furthermore, the Madeira Beach Town Center project was rushed through without a complete application being filed, a basic uh, legal requirement of our city code. The uh, circuit court ruled it was a violation of due process. Trask sat up on the dais and told the commission that the application met all legal requirements. Trask similarly allowed the Holiday Isle development to be approved without compliance with the most basic code requirements. On that occasion, he again falsely assured the commission that all legal requirements were met. These two projects resulted in multiple lawsuits and ripped apart our town. It was totally illegal, and he should have known it. And the people who could possibly want him back are the ones who benefit from these and similar development projects. And there's plenty more to read at uh, SaveTarponSprings.org. Thank you. All right. Are there any other public comments on the, this uh, consent agenda item, items? Okay. Um, IT, are there any remote uh, access comments on the consent <coughs> agenda? If anyone, if anyone online, online would like, like to speak, to speak on, on this item, please, please raise your hand, hand. we'll be allowed out. And we do not have any raised hands at this time. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm going to presume there are no other commissioner comments as we asked before, so I'm going to go straight to roll call. 
Commissioner Kuyas? Yes. Commissioner Eisner? Yes. Vice Mayor Lunt? Yes. Mayor Vatikiotis? Yes. Okay, let's move on to the special consent agenda. Item seven, authorized safety and engineering analysis to determine maximum width of vehicles for on-street uh, parking. City yes. Manager, I'll course. turn it over to Chief Jeff Young. Good evening, uh, Jeff Young, Chief of Police. Uh, before you have a memo uh, drafted, just a, a lot of complaints come in. I'm sure City Hall receives just as many regarding uh, boat trailer parking and what we refer to as the fruit bowl uh, area down around Craig Park. As many as you know, those are very narrow streets. Most of them are under 20 feet in uh, width, or no, in total width, and uh, two lanes of uh, travel direction. You get a large vehicle with a wide trailer parked there, and it mo almost makes it impossible for any vehicle to get down there, let alone fire trucks and ambulances. Uh, state statute 316 uh, point 0.515 does address the overall width of a, uh, a trailer at 102 inches. That's what the maximum width permitted. Uh, it does give municipalities the ability to reduce that down to 96 inches, but you have to go through a, a uh, engineering study of the area and have that report back and go from there with the recommendations to go down to 96 inches. I was looking at that and saying, well, then where are we going to park these other vehicles that have a trailer of 102 inches, so I looked. I put in there that we'll also look at uh, Lemon Street area and the parking lot over there of establishing a few parking spaces over there where we can put the, and accommodate a larger, uh, wider vehicle, and then probably do something with the launch permits, a color-coded one, maybe have a green one for the larger vehicles and a yellow one for the smaller ones, and we can put those aside out there. This doesn't affect Sunset Beach. Sunset Beach already has the ability to have those type, those wider vehicles down there and, and safely park and not cause the obstructions. Uh, but it is a problem in that area. It's been ongoing for years. Uh, we would bring that forward and work with the city attorney's office on uh, redrafting the ordinances to mirror that, whatever that comes from the study and the recommendations to bring forward back to you for consideration. Thank you. Um, let's go to public comments first on this item. Are there any other, or any public comments on this uh, trailer parking, um, <coughs> Craig Park uh, boat ramp? Um, IT, are there any remote access comments concerning this item? If anyone would like to speak, to speak on this on item, side, please, please raise your, your hand, hand and be allowed to talk. talk. And we do and we not have, have any raised, raised hands, hands this time, sir. Okay. Thank you. Let's go to uh, commissioner comments. Uh, commissioner, or uh, Vice Mayor Lunt, do you have any comments? Um, I, too, have been the recipient of many complaints about uh, boat parking or trailer parking in the in the uh, fruit bowl areas, Jeff, you're aware. Um, I think your way of addressing this is both pragmatic and responsible, so I'm, I'm in approval of it. Commissioner Eisner. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just a quick question, just for clarification. Um, if you don't have a sticker, are you allowed to park in the fruit area? Uh, you're not allowed to park that in the street area there, right. on street parking with a boat trailer, no. Okay, because that's some of the complaints that I do get to oh, see. And we, we issue citations right. all the time. Um, the issue, though, is the cost of the, we have to deal, I think, a little bit with the cost of the summons, because for some people it seems to be worth it to accept the summons and still park there for the day. Mm -hmm. So that may be something that we want to bring up. Um, are we allowed to park a vehicle in the uh, Sunset Beach area without a sticker? No, sir. You'll need a launch permit to to park anywhere in the park there. But what about on the um, right-hand side? Because I do see- If you're I... launching a boat out at Sunset Beach, if you're parking on any public street, you need a launch permit on your on your uh, trailer. Okay. Because yeah, again, like I said, I, I've seen them park there. Again, it happens and it, we're out there enforcing it and people will call, but our officers are driving through Sunset Beach, down around Craig Park and anywhere else uh, with those complaints and we address them. Well, those were one thing, and I know I'm going to ask this question possibly of the board to consider also that uh, having employees that work for the city, um, I think they should also be entitled to a, uh, a boat launch ticket similar to what a resident would have. They work for us, and uh, I'd like to see that being considered. So You mean a permit? Yes, oh. a permit. Yeah, because I, I, right now they're being uh, charged outside the city limits. I, I don't know what the price is, whether it's 125 or $130, whatever it is. 
versus what a resident gets to pay. And I'd like to see them get the same benefit since they're here beautifying and, and working for our city. I'd like to see them get the same benefit as a resident. Well, I know they're not paying taxes, but I think that would be a benefit that possibly uh, the city manager can look into, okay? That's it, thank you. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Kulias. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Yeah, Chief, I'm just looking, um, waiting to see the, the results and what we can come up, come up with. We know the fruit bowl's packed on the weekends with trailers and uh, this board understands the urgency in trying to find a third boat ramp for the residents, so thank you. Okay, uh, yes, this is another um, uh, initiative uh, coming out of uh, the last couple of years of people asking for something to be done. I think um, Chief Young's got some good ideas in that regard, and I very much appreciate him coming forward with that. Um, as far as any, um, as far as the cost of the engineering, did you get, have you gotten any kind of a rough ballpark on that yet? Uh, I did not get a uh, okay. ballpark but figure. It's on a it. level of service contract. So Correct. It, it'd be the uh, engineer of record for the city that we right. would use. And um, so, as part of the approval, I'd like to just go ahead and give the city manager authorization to manage that expense. And if he feels that it's excessive, he can come back to us on that if that's acceptable. And then, as far as the time frame goes. I don't know what their uh, time frame would be for the engineering company, so hopefully we can get this back to you within six month period. Okay. It, that as well, if you could give us some kind of an, once you get done, and we'll getting try to make staff. it a lot sooner. Okay. All right. Yeah, this is uh, very important to many of the residents in the uh, fruit salad section. Um, we've done the uh, public comments, commission comments. Okay. We have a motion to approve and uh, motion second. to approve. I'll second. Okay, thank you. Roll call, please. Commissioner Kulias. Yes. Commissioner Eisner. Yes. Vice Mayor Lund. Yes. Mayor Batikiewicz. Yes. Item uh, eight: Approve Public Art uh, Black Heritage Project. Um, same manager, of course. I'm going to go ahead and let you introduce this with whoever is going to get up there. Yes, I'll, I'll have. I'll have Diane Wood uh, start. We've got our chairman of our committee, Joan Jennings, and we have our artist here, so I'll have Diane Wood go ahead and start it off. Good evening. Um, Diane Wood, Cultural and Civic Services Director. Um, I am also the liaison for the Public Art Committee, and um, this is a project that the Public Art Committee has uh, been looking into for quite a few months now, and uh, they've come to a, a wonderful decision, I believe, for this um, Black Heritage Project. Um, it's, uh, it was devised by the Public Art Committee to celebrate the role that the African American Bahamians had in the development of the sponging industry and the community that arose from their historical presence. This project is divided between two city-owned sites, the Sponge Docks and the Union Academy neighborhood. Um, I will say that um, you have a comprehensive memo uh, with photographs um, and uh, the, uh, all of the images and uh, the construction details as well. So I'm going to turn it over to uh, the Chair Joan Jennings to give you a little bit more background about how um, the decision to hire this artist has come about. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. First, I'd like to um, acknowledge the contributions of both the Public Art Committee uh, Vice Chair Lucien Robinson is here, uh, Bill Meals, uh, Graham Jones, Robert Stackhouse, and we have two new alternates, Nick Toth and Biba Christopoulos. And um, the panelists, we, we got uh, 14 um, proposals, including one from Spain and one from uh, a company that did one of the 9-11 memorials in New York. So this really uh, touched a chord, I think, in the art community. Uh, the panelists on the selection panel were Tina Bukovalis, Annie Dabbs, Rod Davis, Nicolette Henderson, who replaced the late Dudley Sally, Milton Smith, Lynn Whitelaw, Teresa Wilkins, and Joan Jennings. Uh, Mayor, if, uh, if I may, I'd like to ask them to stand. Sure. Go. Mommy, stand. I see you. <laughs> <laughs> put a lot of work and thought into this. Um, as Diane mentioned, detailed information on the project, the artists, the locations, and illustrations are included in your backup. 
Uh, the cost of the entire project, which are two sculptures, $135,000, which is currently available in the Public Art Fund. Uh, City Attorney Trask has uh, prepared a contract for Mr. Oliver, which was duly signed and notarized. Uh, Mr. Oliver is here, and he has brought some scale models, which uh, Irene could pass among you if you're interested. Uh, Mr. Oliver is here to answer any questions you may have or any comments you'd like to make. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Jennings. Um, Mr. Oliver, welcome. We're Thank looking you. forward to your work. Um, do you have a presentation, or I've got a question for um, you that's one thing. Sure, that I'll, I just will quickly say uh, thank you for the opportunity and the hard work uh, by the committee, um, including the Public Art Committee and the community folks. Um, I think it's a really unique opportunity. I'm honored to, to be selected and look forward to your questions, too. Um, those are sort of study models that give you a sense uh, of what these uh, two sculptures will be. And uh, feel free to ask any questions, yeah. I, I do have just as many artists would like to do to explain your interpretive symbology of what you're mm -hmm. doing. I know that I've been asked about what people refer to as the arch. I already know what it symbolizes, but if you could explain it in your own words. Um, um, it, this is a unique project. Uh, it's um, um, two sites that are separate, or, or it's not your typical approach, but I think it's, uh, it's appropriate given the history that's trying to be addressed. And um, that's actually like, I, I think a, um, a really important part of this is that there's a lot of history, some of which we'll be able to touch on more so than others, but we want to get a sense of that depth. So um, it's my job to do, continue to do um, research and gathering of information and imagery, including a lot of historical imagery. Uh, that would include historical maps, perhaps even um, maps uh, which would be like of the of the of the actual beds where the the, the ocean where these sponges operated so there's a lot of different th the nice opportunity is that that offers a lot of like uh, windows to enter this artwork uh, so my job is to sort of try to take that and make sort of a visual narrative make it a sort of a beautiful art piece while enabling all those um, uh, historical access points to kind of um, show themselves. Um, there's some interesting challenges when you're doing this, especially artwork uh, like outside. Um, there's a lot of attention paid to, um, to, to strength and weather resistance and materials that are, that, are, that are durable. So this is a stainless steel, 3016 stainless steel, which is our highest grade essentially. And it's also an exterior architectural resin, which is like uh, UV resistant. And um, uh, so it's very a durable type of thing. Um, and it's meant to basically um, enable people to, um, well, the city, to expand on the cultural offerings, you know, the cultural tourism. It's another layer that people can add to, uh, to uh, their education when they're visiting the, the city. Hopefully, the Tarpon Springs, the, this, the one site which is on the sponge docks, will excite people to go and visit the, uh, the second one at the Union Academy site. And we can do some things to, to help enable that including plaques and maps and things. Mm -hmm. The one is, um, if I'm, again, if I was told correctly, it symbolizes a sponge crawl. Is that correct? Oh, yes, yes, yes. And, and then the other one, if I'm not mistaken, I think is the uh, kind of the cage that the sponges were stored in, or is that? Okay, well, uh, actually, that those aspect are sort of, of one symbology. of the same things. But, um, okay, so uh, the crawl is sort of used as sort of like a um, 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 conceptual uh, place to, to, right. to take off from. In other words, that was a kind of container. Um, uh, and I, the one site that I'm using that on is a Union Academy where we've got like a, there's a drainage area surrounded by a chain, existing chain link fence. So we have to surround that area. So it, it's, it's kind of interesting to sort of use that as a, as a, as a way to, um, that was the beginning to how to conceptualize to address mm -hmm. that site. Uh, it's angled and kind of kind of curvilinear, the study model gives a little sense of, a sense of that. Um, and they're, the panels are cut kind of into pickets, so it's there. You'll, you'll probably see in your notes that, um, in, in, the, in the description, that it's supposed to be permeable so that 
air can flow through it. It's not like a big wall to get blown at. It's got some integrity, but also some permeability for to wind uh, to, to blow through. Um, and I guess the other thing is that uh, it that crawl thing, which is sort of like a, it's, it's kind of like a fence, mm -hmm. and enable it's like an armature to to add all these imagers on. There's layers of images that address the history and the interconnectedness of some of the history. Thank you, Mr. Oliver. Welcome. Sure. Um, any other questions? Let me go to uh, public comments on this. Are there any public comments concerning the artwork? Um, IT, are there any uh, remote access comments? If anyone would like to speak on this item, please raise your hand and you'll be allowed to talk. And we do have a raised hand at this time, sir. I'll allow one. Karen, Karen Landon, Landon 45, 45 West, West MLK, MLK Evans Springs. Springs. I would, I would like, like to commend this project. I think it's, it's going to be beautiful and wonderful, and, wonderful and, and thank the artist for his uh, conception of this idea. So uh, I, look I look forward to seeing this in our community. community. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Ms. Landrum. Uh, IT, is there anyone else? We do not have any other raised hands at this time. Thank you. Let's go to commission comments. Vice Mayor Lund. Uh, no comments. Uh, Commissioner Eisner. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. I look forward to this project. I can't wait to see it. I love it. I want to learn as much as I possibly can. On a technical basis, is there anything that we need to spray or polish or to protect the longevity of 316 that you um, know of? The, um, the materials chosen are sort of meant to be as, as and the design um, are meant to be as basically as, uh, as maintenance free as possible. <laughs> I know. Um, so um, the um, stainless steel is a sort of the, the, the grade you would use on a boat, basically. Sure. Um, that's meant to, I, I want that to basically be something that doesn't need anything. <laughs> the, um, the cladding, which is made out of an exterior resin, it's an architectural resin, uh, architectural grade resin material, is a UV resistant uh, material, um, which is like stronger than glass and, and, and has a lot of good properties. Uh, and it's essentially, I looked at the, the specs for several companies that I'm considering for, because they digitally print it and make it for you and they'll cut it for you. and. Um, there, you basically you can do a light power wash if you like. You can do it quarterly. I honestly think the rain's going to take care of some of that. <laughs> um, and uh, then there's some specifications on how to clean it. Should you have like something like graffiti, you know, which is uh, um, a light. Um, uh, it's a, it, they have a this what's called orange stuff, and it's a diluted formula. And it's it's a fairly, resolve, yeah. Fairly easy, uh, easy process. So I have all the specs for that stuff. If anyone has more, more. Um, um, inquiry about that, but meant to be uh, really try to make it as bulletproof as possible. <laughs> that was the Thank intent. You. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Commissioner Kulias. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I had spoken to Mr. Oliver uh, out front uh, before the meeting. Is, is there any way for to have the pictures put up on the big screen for residents to see? Okay. Uh, Mr. Oliver and I talked, and I have some concerns about um, some of the visuals uh, relating to the one the one figure that's going to be down at the sponge docks. Um, I'm hoping to uh, you're able to incorporate more historic mm -hmm. pictures of the black community, whether it be mm -hmm. hookers or in the sponge docks or, or you know just everyday life about it. Uh, I see some of these pictures and. Uh, I understand their, their artistic intent, but I think some of them are just generic to what we're trying to tie down to our city mm -hmm. and the history with it all. Uh, so if you could please consider in, incorporating more uh, of the history, uh, if we could throw in some pictures and, and talk about Mr. Ed Dorsett a little bit in, in the monuments. And uh, we also talked about QR codes and uh, the QR codes are great, but they require people who are going to and from to have an attention span that's mm -hmm. a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. And um, 
if we could somehow incorporate captions to these mm -hmm. photos and, and tell a story with you know this artwork, it, it would be appreciated. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw the monument we have more at the Union Academy neighborhood and incorporates a lot of the history mm -hmm. between the neighborhood and uh, all parts of Tarpon Springs with the um, African American community. And th there were still a couple generic pictures mm -hmm. that if we could, you know, work with people like maybe Mr. Milton Smith or Dabs to acquire some historic pictures to mm -hmm. involve it would be appreciated. Yeah, um, the, the, that process started right away um, thanks to the committee also connected with Mrs. Dabs um, to acquire some images. Uh, and it will actually continue. <laughs> uh, the, it's not a stagnant process. Um, that's actually the beauty of it um, is that um, a lot of interesting discoveries will come along the way. Okay. We're in like a what you're just responding to, and I don't don't disagree with your response at all because it's a draft, uh, you know, aesthetic. It's kind of trying to give you a sense of what this will look like. Um, there'll be more specific photographs. The definitely the idea that it's got to be have the or, the oro the African American content. And I think there's a prominent hand holding sponges for that reason. It's almost like a little keystone hanging in the middle of that that that, that one of the mm. sponges. On. That was the purpose to try to grab someone visually and automatically begin to get them into what this is about. And then we have more historical images, including what well, my job is to artistically render this so it's also art as well and, and grabs people enough so they want to go to that QR, QR code. They want to go to the second site and they want to see that too. So that's very much my, my, my goal. Okay, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But we will be able to incorporate some captions under these, some of those. And, oh, actually, I wanted to tell you this too. The, because these are digitally imited, uh, digitally printed uh, resin panels, we can incorporate quotes, all kinds of things can get in there. So that's, again, part of what I'm, I've got to curate, edit in there. But things can, even words can get in there too. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, Mike. thank you. Um, I, I know it's as quick as the creative process takes, but any estimate as far as um, completing the project? Um, what we did with the contract was basically, um, and this deliberately did this to kind of give a little wiggle room because you never know what happens, but right. um, you know, for the for the unforeseen. But we've given up a, a year span to do the two projects. Um, I foresee being done earlier than that, so I'm giving plenty of wiggle room for for developments, and uh, you know, things will happen when we start to prepare the sites and all that stuff. I've got lead times on materials. Things could change with that a little bit, so I'll be in touch with those companies. So. Um, you know, I, you know. Again, there's enough room to get this done. You know. Right, mm -hmm. and and there is a loose end as well. We pretty much know where the uh, cap artwork is going to go. The Union Academy neighborhood artwork is going to go. The sponge docks. I, I had a conversation with Ms. Jennings, that that's yet to be determined, and and I think she's going to. I'm, I'm hoping she'll come back with a recommendation from the Public Art Committee to the commission as far as where it would be located at the sponge docks. Um, and of course, you'll obviously you'll be involved in that. I just wanted to state that in case there's anyone wondering where it's going to be located at the sponge docks. Um, are there any other or the, any anything else? OK. Um, we OK up there as far as any other comments? OK. I think so. um, no other commission comments. Roll call, please. We need a motion. We don't have a motion. Uh, motion. motion oh, to we approve. don't have a motion yet. Uh, motion and uh, to approve in the second, please. Thank you, Mr. Trask. Motion to approve a public art Black Heritage Project. Second. Roll call. Commissioner Kuyas. Yes. Commissioner Eisner. Yes. Vice Mayor Lunt. Yes. Mayor Vatikiotis. Yes. Okay. Uh, item ten. Uh, we need to be mindful at 7.30 we're going to um, oh. stop and um, go get on with the ordinances and resolutions. Uh, item 10, let's well, see if well, we can we do that one. Nine? Pardon me? Well, Did we, we do nine, nine yet? Nine, might be oh, quicker. that's a quickie, yes. Thank you. Um, approved policy for entertainment of visiting dignitaries. Um, that's something in your backup. As you know, we had the, um, the visit from um, the general from Greece which was not part of the Sister Cities program and was something that he had been trying to do uh, through the previous administration for a couple of years, but because of COVID um, prevented that from happening. He, um, I thought it, we, I've asked around, we didn't have a policy for visiting dignitaries and, and it was a little bit awkward trying to put 
uh, a visit together, schedule a visit, dinners, and that sort of thing. So um, I worked with the uh, uh, city clerk and also the city manager to devise something, just something simple, and the point is to also provide this to the dignitary as well before they come so they know what to expect. So that's pretty much the sum of it. Um, are there any comments on that item? Do you have anything else? No. No public comments on that. Uh, IT, are there any remote access comments? If anyone online would like to speak on this item, please, please raise your hand. You'll be allowed to talk. talk. And we do not have any raised hands at this time. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Conowitz, Vice Mayor Lund. Um, no, I think this is a good idea to have a policy in place. Um, it was a little scattered the last time around, and I think some of us were taken unawares as to, to what exactly to do, and this outlines. Right. Don't we need an motion to Thank approve? Before? Not yet. Do you have any comments? No. Okay, Commissioner Kulias. I think this is a good outline on meeting and talking with other dignitaries and should be in place for our city. So thank you, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Um, now I'd like to have a motion and a second. Motion to approve. Second. Commissioner Kulias? Yes. Commissioner Eisner? Yes. Vice Mayor Lunt? Yes. Mayor Vaticiotis? Yes. Okay. Now item 10, expenditure of ARPA funds. Um, this is uh, fairly straight, for, city manager of the course, this is part of the budget, so go ahead and. This is what we, we talked about this at the meeting Thursday, and we've talked about all three of the, of the commission work sessions. Um, last Thursday, um, we came up with these three items to bring back to you, the, the new fire station 70 design, the new cops and kids center design, and the hospital construction project. Um, total commitments, 2,600,000. Um, which you've approved tonight, you have committed 500, 342 and change of the 12 million. Um, again, we had extensive discussions about this on Thursday night and we're bringing this back for formal approval of the board. Okay. Um, the, the designs are straightforward, the million dollars for the um, fire station and the uh, 600,000 for the U Cops and Kids complex rather than just the building. It's complex. And then also the um, if you could explain the connection between the million dollars for the overhang at the hospital and the application of the COVID funds for that use, that was one of the ones that you felt. Yeah, yes, one, one, of the, one of the major reasons, obviously because of the city's you know, ownership, but um, the number one project for Mr. Dunkel when he was here and the one that best fits the COVID, the COVID model was that overhang. Not, o not only as we saw when COVID happened, the need of being able to line people up outside, um, but because of what it does for the building and the next phase that they need to go through for the hardening of the building, um, that's essential. So, so if there's any questions, Ron Herring researched this well, the use of COVID money for that that point since the building is ours and since um, there's, there's a great justification of the needs of another, another pandemic happens like that again, that overhang would be vital into having the people outside and being able to stretch along that walkway. Again, along with the next phase, um, the hardening of that building that, that is fitting of the COVID money and, and would not be, we don't believe that would be challenged by the federal government and is, was the number one pick of, of Mr. Dunkel in the hospital that was submitted to us. Okay, thank you, Mr. LaCourus. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna go to public comment. Uh, Mr. Crunk, are you here? There you are, come on forward. Mr. Crump is the chief finance, Mr. Uh, Crump. Um, I'm actually uh, Ryan Quattlebaum, so I'm the newly appointing, appointed uh, CEO at Advent Health North Pinellas. So, oh, uh, congratulations, actually, that's right. You look familiar in that yeah, photograph. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I actually don't officially start until Monday, but uh, I, I, this was very important, so I wanted to attend and, and say um, to the mayor and to the uh, commissioners, um, on behalf of Advent Health North Pinellas, thank you for your partnership and your commitment. And uh, I look forward to continuing to partner with you guys and uh, invest in our community. So I just wanted to say a most sincere thank you on behalf of Advent Health North Pinellas. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, you had a, a pretty good uh, predecessor, Mr. Uh, Jason Dunkel worked real well with us and we uh, were looking forward to the same thing. If you could just, now that we've got you captured, could you just tell us a couple of <laughs> words as far as where you come from and, and just to, uh, familiarize uh, the, the residents that are on, 
are watching and, and listening as well. Absolutely. So um, I currently am the CFO for Advent Health Wesley Chapel, so about an hour to the east of us. Um, I've been with Advent Health now for about three years. Prior to my time here in Florida, I was the chief financial officer for two hospitals in a rural community in Northern California. Um, ultimately, in January of 2020, we, my wife and I moved out here to, to Florida, and then about a month later, the pandemic hit. And uh, it's been an amazing experience, though, to help support the, the people in that community. And I look forward to continuing that work and support of the people of Tarpon Springs uh, in my role as CEO. Well, congratulations on behalf of all of us. Um, uh, let me, um, and, and hopefully we'll have a positive outcome on the vote. Um, are there any other public comments? Um, IT, are there any remote access public comments? If anyone online would like to speak on this item, please raise your hand and be allowed to call. And we do not have any raised hands at this time. Thank you. Uh, let's go to commission comments. Uh, Vice Mayor Lunt. I think this meets both the needs of the hospital and the needs of the community. Um, people may not know, but the last time we had a hurricane, I think it was Irma, it ripped a good portion of that front off. Um, when they did construction, when they reconstructed, um, because of where the lobby was and because of where funding was and stuff like that, they, they didn't have a chance to complete it. However, they did have the foresight to put the... Uh, the ground mounts in underneath the current sidewalk, so I thought that was a great forward planning move. Anyway, I'm, I'm all for this project. Great, thank you. Commissioner Eisner. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we've exhausted speaking about this, so I'm gonna say very little except that I support this. <laughs> we, um, we've gone through this, and uh, I mean, you just have my vote on it, so I appreciate okay. that. Thank you very thank much. You. Uh, Commissioner Kulias. Uh, th through a uh, a couple of budget sessions we, we've been able to come together and uh, we all understand the importance of uh, designing a new fire station over there at Gulf Road. Uh, cops and kids and designing a building there for future generations is important to the community and the hospital project. We know we have to fix that um, that overhang to be able to start the, the skeleton and hardening the building. So we're, I think we're putting all the money in the right spots. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner Kulias. Um, the, the the one thing I've emphasized is that we've got our operating budget that we actually have to approve annually. So that has to be balanced, that has to be done, but then we've got a lot of money that's project money that we don't need to spend in one year. We can just keep it there and take a hard look at what we need, make sure we've got our priorities right before we spend it. And that's the approach this commission has taken. I very much appreciate that. Um, without any, uh, it's uh, motion and in a second, is that correct? Yes, okay. motion to approve the uh, three projects, the fire station, the cops and kids, the hospital construction project. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Commissioner Kulias? Yes. Commissioner Eisner? Yes. Vice Mayor Lunt? Yes. Mayor Batikiotis? Yes. It's 7.33 and we're gonna move on to the ordinances and resolutions and we'll pick up with uh, item 11 once we're done with the ordinances and resolutions. Um, the first item 17, resolution 2022-30, salary administration changes for fiscal year 2023. Mr. Trask, if you could read the resolution by title, please. Mayor Commissioners, this is resolution 2022-30, a resolution of the Board of Commissioners of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, authorizing changes in the organization of the Utilities Division of Public Services, the Recreation Division of Public Services, Public Works, Finance, Information Technology, Project Administration, and Police Departments, including the addition of positions, reclassifications, and regrading of positions, revision of job descriptions, additional extra contractual raises for fire and police departments, and providing for an effective date. That was the reading of resolution 2022-30 by title only. Thank you, Mr. Trask. Uh, City Manager, of course. Yes, this is a, another item. Um, for those of you, it's, it's, it's there to watch on Thursday night's third uh, budget work session of the commission. Um, this was the first item that we discussed extensively. Um, the different categories, it talks about the salary ranges and the proposal based on what's going on with other cities and to, to keep pace 
with other cities. This doesn't put us ahead. It's, this keeps pace with what's going on in, in our market. Um, a recommendation to raise the ranges 5%, the bottom and top. Uh, general salary adjustments. Um, originally, we had brought 4 to 5% across the board at the first budget work session. There was to talk about getting the, the lower paid employees a little extra bump, especially with everything's going on with inflation. So we devised a method of a 7, 6, and 5%. Um, giving the extra 2% and 1% to the, to the lower, lower paid employees. Uh, we went through, the different departments were there uh, to go through the different regrading of, of positions. That was mostly, again, to keep up with the market and those are areas and jobs that are highly competitive and uh, uh, frankly, other cities and stuff are looking to take people and get those jobs. So this tries to keep us um, ahead of the curve and putting the job related to the duties and the salaries. Um, we decided, um, we've had a list the whole time of new positions. We decided to fund uh, new positions in public works, uh, two police officer positions, um, a grant specialist, and uh, a, a digital evidence technician for the police department. Uh, and. And finally, we, we had an item um, about raises um, based on the police and fire contracts, um, the incredible raises we're seeing um, from other places that contracts up this year and, and um, what we would need to do to try to keep pace um, with a year to go in negotiating. And we came up with, with a 3% increase. The only new thing you have, you have a memo from the two chiefs to talk about the six employees in a fire and two in police um, who are non-union and due to compression air issues, they are asking you to include um, those people um, into those raises to keep from the compression issues. Um, that is new. Um, the other thing that you're not seeing in this one is we took the charter officials out and we'll deal with that probably September 13th to give you time. Obviously the raises for charter officials and you had a request um, from the city auditor. Obviously you haven't been through the evaluation process yet. So we, we just took that out of here. We'll bring that back as a separate item. So whereas you saw that on Thursday night, it is not in here in, in what you're approving now. Um, and again, the results of Thursday night's meeting, we've, we've, uh, we've put forward in a document and coming forward tonight to approval. Uh, again, with the only thing asking about um, to review and decide on the additional non-union positions. Um, just for clarification, when there's a motion and a second, should that motion, it's for the resolution, but should be amended to include those other if, positions? If you choose to. If you choose to. Right. Yes, and then the three percent is already for the union uh, increases the GWI three percent, which is in addition to the two. That's already in that's the contract already, that, as well. That's already okay. in there to prove. Okay, it, it's your decision whether to add this or or not. Okay, thank you. Um, any public comments on this item? Good evening, uh, Jake Miller, four 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 South Huey Ave. Uh, I'm honored to stand before you uh, tonight, not only as a representative of the Tarpon Springs Police Department, as a police officer and a detective, but also as a representative of the Suncoast Police Benevolent Association as one of its directors. On behalf of the nearly 50 members represented by the Suncoast Police Benevolent Association under the collective bargaining agreement, I would like to extend our sincerest gratitude to Mayor Vaticiotis, the Board of Commissioners, uh, City Manager LaCorris, and Chief Young. Uh, for your continued support to our members. Uh, we truly appreciate the willingness to meet with us and listen to our concerns regarding current fiscal concerns for our members. Your support of the discussed salary increases for the upcoming fiscal year does not only impact these members, but more importantly, positively impacts our families. Our spouses, our children, and other loved ones are appreciative knowing that this city supports our mission and helps us to provide for them each day. So again, uh, I want to extend our, our gratitude and our thanks on behalf of all of us. Thanks, Detective Miller. Thank you. Mr. Stone, good evening. Good evening, good evening. Michael Stone, President, Local 4966. We represent the fire department, or the fire, all, firefighters for the city of Tarpon Springs. I don't know how I'm supposed to follow that. That was fantastic. So we, uh, as far as myself and uh, our members and your firefighters that 
that work in your city every day. We appreciate the foresight. We appreciate your commitment to us, and we uh, appreciate you taking the time to, to put something in place to support us going further in our careers here at the city. Uh, I'd also like to say that we are in agreement and support that you do incorporate or encompass those non-bargaining unit members in this uh, pay increase. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, uh, commissioners. Appreciate it. Okay, thank you, Mr. Stone. Before we go to the next one, is that part of that memo? Uh, Mr. Stone asked for the non-union members to be included. That's, that's the one that that's you'll make for it fire down. and police. Okay, thank you. Uh, other public comments, please. Are there any remote access comments? If anyone online would like to speak on this item, please raise your hand. You'll be allowed to talk. And we do not have any raised hands at this time. Thank you. Now, on this one, we're going to do a, a motion in a second. Then we'll go to commission comments. So if I could have a, a motion to include um, an amendment as... Uh, for the go ahead, Commissioner Cuyas. Uh, motion to approve resolution 2022-30 salary administration changes for fiscal year uh, 2023, in addition to the salary increases for the non-union command staff members of the fire department and police department. Second. Second. Okay. Thank you. Now, uh, Vice Mayor Lund. Um, I can't pull the figures off my head. Do we have? Uh, room in this in our general fund i know we were getting down pretty skinny the other night yes we do ron hi ron <laughs> he's here, well, Ron's here. But, but don't worry don't get up ron i'll take yeah, care of it for you down, ron. He, he he has he has found the money um and it was money left over from the health insurance thing so not only the forty-four thousand that it when we were talking about he has found that and he has and and the money and he has found the money for this addition so there's no so the money is found and, and able to be budgeted without <coughs> sacrificing anything else okay with that said i'm 150 percent behind this commissioner Eisner. i have a little bit of a different take on this i'm not against um, the increase, what I am uh, would like to do is have these separate um, and not have them together because, as I think I spoke last time at the budget meeting, um, the, uh, the cost of living is the same for every single person on the non-union side. And to just give a 3% across the board, the people that are really high earners are getting more than others and yet it's 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 not even it's not fair so i'd like to have um a set amount to give each non-union person a certain amount of cost of living increase that's not a percentage of their salary well, well maybe you when this is three percent is an addition to their normal raise is that correct right you want to explain that is that was that clear to you in other words the three percent is addition to the raise that they would have normally gotten I understand. I just don't want it to be a percentage. I'd like it to be a fixed amount. Because a fixed amount? Yes. Because everybody's eggs gone up. Everybody's milk has gone up. I mean, the, I'm not, I'll be honest with you. I'm just kind of looking because I don't understand how you would do that. Well, you come up with a, a fixed amount, and each one of those non union people get that as an increase rather than a percentage of person that's making $100,000 a year is going to get a different 3% than somebody earning 30000 for argument's sake. So all I'm trying to say is if we give, uh, I'm just going to use a number, $100 to each person, $1,000 to each person, um, an increase of so that they all are equal. That's all. I'm just trying to make it a fair a fairer amount than 3% across the board like that. I understand the ramifications, believe me. I'm not, I mean, hang on a second. Let, let's listen to Commissioner Kulias and then we'll go back. Well, when we first started talking about, you know, salary increases for all of city staff, um, I'd originally made a proposal to have some of the file rank city staff employees with the 7, 8% increase and uh, after doing some uh, number plugging, we, we we saw that they were actually jumping some of their superiors in salary range, and that that is the case with 
some of these non-union staff members in which uh, if, this, if the pay scale doesn't increase, they're at the, I, I don't know how to say them, those below them are actually coming really close to salary, to their salaries without really an incentive to want, it, want to be promoted with similar salaries if, you know, with more work. And uh, we had talked with the city manager that in order to have those file and rank employees salaries increase that across the board we'd have to get that minimum five percent and um, so it, in order to be able to not have certain uh, positions jump their superiors in these increases I understand why we need to have that happen and you're suggesting I'm, I'm supporting it I mean with uh, you know so, some of our non-union executive staff, they're, they're gonna have some, uh, some of the individuals below them with near similar salaries if we don't give them that 3% and they're not getting overtime, unlike some of those other staff members. Who so work. what you're saying is to make sure that um, employees that work for their supervisor, their supervisor is not gonna make less than their employee, is that the gist of it? Well, they weren't making less, but the, the, the gap in between what the difference shrunk big time. Well, I mean, I understand, but to me, that would be more of a management issue. They're not our employees. Okay. They're the city manager's employees. They're Chief Young's employees. And I would hope that that, that kind of a recommendation would come back to the commission. I, I'm not sure of how to deal with it any other way. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't particularly want to get into managing salaries for individual employees we've got a request on the table from the city manager or actually chief young in this case through the city manager and if that's some a concern on the commission i would ask that you work with chief young actually city manager of course and chief young together to come up with something um I, i'm not sure if we would be able to do it this um this this uh by september I, I'm not sure I understand. So I think he's agreeing with the three percent. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing with it, Mayor. I understand You're just experiencing some concern yes. of not getting into that. Yes, I know okay. I'm supporting it, and I did want to follow up. As uh, has the the on call um, been issued, uh, been addressed with the city staff employees from seventy five dollars to one twenty. The, the on call is budgeted. Okay. We, we've got it fixed in the budget. There's a lot about the policies and the different. We've got. A lot of different depart departments. I want to consolidate the part, the each department. So, so the policy is going to be a little bit longer um, because we're trying to get everybody to get together. All the different divisions got to be prepared to be consistent. So while the policy we're we're continuing to work on, we did budget the money for what we expect for it. So that money is in the budget for the policy to go. We've just got a couple more meetings to institute the policy. Okay. Um, yeah. But 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 it is found in the in your budget now that you're going to approve in the two public hearings the money for the beeper pay the addition 125 the highest and that that is the money part is budgeted it's just a complicated policy that we want to make sure it is fair and done right and uh, meets auditing and everything else so we're trying to we've got a couple more meetings of all the departments and the people on beeper pay to try to refine that and get a good policy before but the money is budgeted so it is coming okay. I, I think um, I appreciate your comments, by the way. I understand what you're getting at. And I think we're all um, the theme this year is retention. And this is where you're seeing all this accommodation being done uh, through the unions as, as well as some of our other employees with the regradings that you see in front of you and everything else. Uh, I think it's important next year. It's going to be somewhat critical to see how the economy plays out. It could be in a worse situation. We may be in an OK situation. And and um, um, for the residents that weren't watching last time, our uh, health insurance pretty much came in at about 5% more than what we paid last year, which was a significant accomplishment. Uh, and at, the projection is, at least uh, at this point, that we shouldn't expect that much more of an increase for next year as well. So I think we're doing well in that regard. I wanted to get back to um, Commissioner Eisner on that. Um, sure. If you could just kind of, in other words, you, you're you're okay with the three percent, but you want to convert that to actual dollars? Correct. I want it to be, um, you have eight people here, 
a cost of living uh, adjustment should be equal because everybody on these eight people, um, all of their costs have gone up. And it sh I don't think it should be on a percentage basis. I think it should be on a set amount, whatever that set amount is. You're talking about the non-union employee, Correct. okay. The, That's the, why I didn't want it incorporated in the other right. uh, agenda the, item because we should just have a, and, and I think I spoke about this, the same thing at the budget meeting, that there should be just a set amount that's cost of living. Uh, cost of living's gone up for every single person here in the room um, by a set amount. And that's what I think they should be rather than at a percentage. Okay, I, I, I want to, um, um, I, I understand what you're saying, but for this evening, I think that um, it, I'd like to get this thing approved for this evening and if there's some process or some I understand what you're, you know, you're alluding to um, as far as actual dollars, uh, a set amount for each person, I believe, is what you're getting exactly at. Exactly correct, yeah. yes. And, and that, I think, again, would be somewhat of a policy issue that if you could talk, I don't know if you've already had a conversation with the city manager on that, um, um, but for this evening, I... If you want me to, I, I, I'm for the increase, so if, okay. you, if you wanted me to agree to the 3%, I will. I'm not against it, I'm not against the increase. I just feel that um, it, it's more equal way of distribution, that's all. No, no, I, that, I'm just saying I haven't followed because it's kind of new and in the middle of a meeting to be talking about this. And okay. I understand that's the only way you and I can talk. That's but correct. But it, it might be better for you to get with the city manager and he can kind of explain some concepts to us all when he gets to that point, um, if you will. So if, if I would ask if we could get approval of this resolution this evening can I and then ask a question I, pardon me I, can i ask a question yes prior yes to sir go ahead getting to resolution ron is the disparity between there's eight people here um in the fire department they're mostly district chiefs um in the police department they're both majors is there a big salary disparity between these levels that's a good question Good evening, Ron Herring, Finance Director. Um, I've got the salary amounts for each of them. If you want me to read those off, they range between, with the 3%, um, between um, $3,800 to about $4,300 okay, for the so for eight of them. So there's basically $500 difference in the salary ranges between them? Yeah. So 3% is gonna be pretty equitable across the board. Thank you, Ron, that's okay. what I wanted to know. Thank you for clarifying that. that Thank you, Mr. Herring. Um, are there any other commission comments? Okay, we have a second, um, uh, a motion and a second, and may I have roll call, please? Motion to approve. Uh, no, we have, no, the, we, have we already have the motion. Have that, sorry. Let's go ahead and roll call. Commissioner Kuyas? Yes. Commissioner Eisner? Yes. Vice Mayor Lunt? Yes. Mayor Vatikiotis? Uh, yes, and, and thank you for your um, cooperation, Commissioner Eisner, on that one. So, no, I appreciate that. Thank you. Just trying to be fair. Right. Okay, now we're going to move into um, item 18, which actually has two applications associated with it, um, and both of those are quasi judicial. Um, one is application. They're, they both have to do with the, um, the car wash at the corner of, of um, Klosterman Road in US 19, the new one. One is for the car wash itself and the other is for the pole sign. And um, we've got to get those resolved, both of them tonight together. So one of them is um, application 21170, um, which is the car wash. And that involves um, three ordinances. And what we're gonna do is, um, go ahead and, and uh, start the uh, quasi-judicial process and ask Mr. Trask to read the first ordinance, 2022-03 by title, and then we'll incorporate the discussion and the comments and the reports that take place for that particular item with the other two so we don't have to go through that again. Um, Mr. Trask, if you could read the um, ordinance by title, also give us the instructions on the quasi-judicial process and swearing any witnesses that are here this evening. 
Thank you, Mayor. This is Ordinance 2022-03, an ordinance of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, annexing 0.92 acres, more or less, of real property located at 38652 U.S. Highway 19 North on the northwest corner of U.S. Highway 19 North and Klosterman Road. Application 21-170, providing for findings and providing for an effective date. The second reading of this ordinance will be on September 13th, 2022. This was published in the Tampa Bay Times by title with a map on July 6, 2022, and it will also be um, <coughs> advertised on August 31st, 2022. This is a quasi-judicial proceeding where the Board of Commissioners acts in a quasi-judicial rather than a legislative capacity. At a quasi-judicial hearing, it is not the Board's function to make law, but rather to apply law that has already been established. In a quasi-judicial hearing, the board is required by law to make findings of fact based upon the evidence presented at the hearing and apply those findings of fact to previously established criteria contained in the Code of Ordinances in order to make a legal decision regarding the application before it. The board may only consider evidence at the hearing that the law considers competent, substantial, and relevant to the issues. If the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates that the applicant has met the criteria established in the Code of Ordinances, then the board is required by law to find in favor of the applicant. By the same token, if the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence of the hearing demonstrates that the applicant has failed to meet the criteria established in the Code of Ordinances, then the board is required by law to find against the applicant. Anyone that's going to be speaking on this application, if you could stand up, raise your right hand, and I'm going to swear you're under oath. I swear the testimony you're about to give is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, uh, Ms. Vincent, is the the applicant is here? I see that. Yep. Um, is there anyone that um, that claims to be an affected party in this matter that's here present? Um, any commissioner has had any ex parte communications with the applicant or their representatives? No. Okay. Ms. Vincent, if you can go ahead and proceed with your presentation, please. Thank you, and I apologize to the board. It appears that the presentation did, did not get loaded for this evening, so I'm gonna talk through this. Um, you have the, all the agenda back up. So there's two applications that I want to discuss, 21-170 uh, for the actual car wash property itself, and then application 22-68, which is a very small parcel with that's surrounded by the car wash that actually is an out parcel for a billboard sign. And so the application um, is to uh, application request is to annex property at the northwest corner of US 19 and East Klosterman Road. Uh, the property is an unincorporated county now. Um, and uh, through a redevelopment, there was an old car wash there and, so, and uh, car sales previously on the property. Um, it went through a redevelopment process with Pinellas County. As part of that, they are actually increasing their existing water sewer water service and also um, uh, hooking into the city sewer service. So those precipitated the, ne the necessity to annex the property under our mandatory annexation ordinance. Uh, the property is largely, uh, the, the, uh, the build process is largely complete. I don't know if it's actually been CO'd in the county or not, but it is substantially complete. Um, and so we are ready to go forward with the annexation process. Um, let's see, I'm fighting with my So uh, you have, for each uh, application, you'll have three um, ordinances. The first is an, the actual annexation ordinance. The second is a future land use map um, ordinance. Um, under that, we would be annex, uh, changing the land use designation from the, the Pinellas County Residential Office Retail uh, to the City of Tarpon Springs designation of Commercial General. And then you have a rezoning action, which would be rezoning the property from the Pinellas County designation of Commercial Parkway to the proposed um, highway business designation in the City of Tarpon Springs. And similarly, you have the same actions for the, the small piece um, that is the actual billboard sign that's contained within the larger property. So the exact same um, land use uh, and zoning and annexation actions. Um, there really are no um, issues uh, with our required review criteria for annexation and land use. The proposed land use is less intensive um, and, or more restrictive, if you will, uh, by the city designation than it is uh, the, the counties. So that, that is um, a requirement that has been met. Um, 
the uh, similar the zoning designations are a little more restrictive within the city than they are within um, the county as well. There are, I do want to talk about some of the things that will be non-conforming upon uh, annexation since it was developed in Pinellas County. That would be the vehicle stacking, the dumpster enclosure size, the landscape buffer size, although the actual landscaping is, is um, consistent with our requirements, if not more uh, stringent. Um, our specific street lighting and uh, standards and traffic control sign design standards um, and then the reduced side setback from the freestanding signage. So those are the minor uh, nonconformities that we will inherit upon annexation. The uh, Planning and Zoning Board reviewed these under two separate actions. Uh, the first was on January 24th. That was the main big parcel. Um, they did recommend um, approval of all three of the ordinances and then the billboard section was reviewed on July the 18th, and again, all three ordinances were recommended for approval. Staff recommendation is to approve these as presented in the agenda backup and staff reporting. Again, I apologize that we didn't have the presentation for you tonight. Uh, and with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's go to uh, commissioner questions. Uh, Vice Mayor Lund. Um, Renee, there's a, a difference in the 12 feet to 10 feet a surround for the solid are solid waste people going to have a problem with that not to my knowledge no they should be fine okay um and could you explain more what the uh the signage requirements and lighting requirements are that we're not making sure so within our land development code we have design requirements so we have the decorative poles and um, the, those requirements that are in our code obviously they're not in Pinellas County's code so they won't have the decorative on light light standards and street signs and things of that nature yeah it's okay I don't think the decorative stuff is <laughs> appropriate for classroom in a 19 anyway but okay thank you Commissioner Eisner thank you <clears throat> thank you mayor was this an unorthodox type of annexing or just regular um, I don't know it was unorthodox it's uh, you know there this is one that is because they're increasing service um, or adding new service that's provided by the city they are required to go through the mandatory annexation process um, they've you know they've gone through the entire build in Pinellas County um, it wasn't necessarily by choice it's just kind of the way things have worked out so um, because we had to come back and pick up the sign um, th there's a very small piece in the middle of that. We couldn't go ahead and annex the car wash until we actually had the an annexation traveling with it for the sign because it would create an enclave. So it's a little odd, but not unorthodox. So it's no, not really very much different than any other annexing, just that you've combined them. Correct. Okay. That's pretty much it. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Kulias. I'm happy to support this annexation. Uh, owner of this property is a community person too and uh, happy to see it happen thank you okay thank you um, I need to ask the um, um, applicant whether you have any questions for Ms. Vincent just questions for Mrs. Vincent Troy Carter 904 Tomlinson Drive Lutz Florida <coughs> uh, no no comments other than she's been fantastic to work with um, a professional engineer project manager happy to answer any questions that anyone thank has you. thank you um, Ms. Vincent, um, you'd like your staff report accepted into end of evidence? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, the applicant, you can come forward now for your presentation. If you have any comments or presentation to make. No, I think she hit on a lot of the key points. Um, just for clarification on that dumpster enclosure, the dumpster uh, enclosure is two extra feet uh, wide on each side, but the dumpster is a standard size. I think it's a six cubic yard, so it's compatible with all solid waste. Okay. Thank you. Um, hang on, sir. Are there any questions from the commission for the um, applicant? Commissioner, I'm um, sorry, Vice Mayor Lunt. No. Commissioner Eisner. Commissioner Kulias. Thank you. Um, let's go to Ms. Vincent. Obviously, you don't have any, okay. No, sir. Uh, public comments. Are there any public comments concerning this matter? Uh, Mr. Geddes, you were sworn in. Uh, David Ballard uh, Geddes Jr. Uh, I live in uh, on Georgia Avenue in Palm Harbor. Uh, approximately three years ago, on the corner of 
580 Main Street in Dunedin and Belcher, a developer was given rights to put in a car wash, uh, Neil Volk, I think his name is, and he was also given rights, to my knowledge, uh, to put in a well point, um, having access, you know, directly to, to his own water uh, source. Um, my question, uh, as based on Senate Bill 64, um, where Senate Bill 64 is wanting to add reclaimed water into our drinking water supply, will this car wash um, be using um, city water? Do they have their own well point? Will they be using reclaimed water to wash automobiles with, as we know that we have all these um, various water issues um, on our horizon and these car washes use uh, non-essential um, usage for water. Um, what type of water will they be using? Also, do they filter their water um, after, um, to a degree? Um, are they required to clean the water that they, they do use and filter it as they exhaust the water? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gettis. You can We'll try and get you an answer during the rebuttal of the applicant. Um, are there any other public comments? Okay. Um, um, IT. IT, are there any uh, remote access comments? Thanks, Mr. Trask. <laughs> Just trying to help. Yeah. If anyone online would like to speak on this item, please raise your hand and you'll be allowed in. And we do not have any raised hands at this time. Thank you. Um, would the applicant come forward to any rebuttal? Primarily, if you could ask, answer Mr. Geddes's questions, that would be very helpful. Absolutely. So the, the point of connection will be your water that is pumped directly into the building. There is a reclaimed system, a recycle system on site. It consists of about four baffle tanks. Um, it's not obviously 100% efficient. Nothing is. It runs about at 75 to 80% efficiency. Um, and then it will have to be serviced regularly because of smells, odors, stuff like that, which is handled by uh, an environmental consultant. Uh, I have no problems putting forth uh, a maintenance plan to give you more information on the um, specifications of the maintenance program. Okay, thank you. Okay, we're going to close the public hearing, and um, may I get a, um, a motion and a second on the first ordinance, please, just on the first ordinance. Motion to approve application 22-170 and 22-68, 3865. Actually, it would be uh, for ordinance 2022-03. Sorry. Under uh, item A. We have motion to approve ordinance 2022-03. <coughs> May I have a second, please? I'll second. second. No, I'm sorry. Okay. Now, are there any uh, commission comments on this? Uh, Vice Mayor Lunt. No comment at this time. Commissioner Eisner. Commissioner Kuyas. No comment. Okay, I don't have any. Roll call, please. Commissioner Kuyas. Yes. Commissioner Eisner. Yes. Vice Mayor Lunt. Yes. Mayor Vatagiotis. Yes. Um, Mr. Trask on Ordinance 2022-04, if you could read that by title only. Mayor, Commissioner's Ordinance 2022-04, an ordinance of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, amending the future land use map for 0.92 acres, more or less, of real property located at 38652 U.S. Highway 19 North on the northwest corner of U.S. Highway 19 North and Clausman Road from Pinellas County Land Use Designation, ROR, Residential Office Retail, to City of Tarpon Springs Land Use Designation, CG, Commercial General, Application 21 dash 170 providing for findings and providing for an effective date there will be a second reading of this ordinance on september 13th 2022 this was published in the tampa bay times by title with a map on july 6 2022 and it will be advertised again on august 31st 2022 okay the quasi-judicial process the staff report and applicants reports uh, count for this one so if i could get a motion and a second for to approve this please Motion to approve ordinance 2022-04. Second. Okay. Are there any commission comments on this one, uh, Vice Mayor Lunt? No comment at this time. Commissioner Eisner. Um, I have a question for the city attorney. If that's for the a, attorney? Yes. That's fair. Um, city attorney, is, was this something that was uh, in-depth for you to research? before I, prior to the uh, coming here today? 
So I worked with city staff early in the application process to review this. There were a number of changes to the ordinances because of the effective date was a concern. So there was some time involved in dealing with Pat McNeese as to the ordinances themselves and the review of the application package. So I said, I would say yes. Will you, would you be able to just ballpark me a, uh, an hourly figure a little bit? It, it would be it would be in the invoice. We can take a look at the invoice. Okay. I don't I, I don't know. It well, was over, you know, two months period of time. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm good. Is that all? Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Cuyas. No comment. Okay. I don't have anything. Um, if we could have we have a roll call, please. Commissioner Cuyas. Yes. Commissioner Eisner. Yes. Vice Mayor Lund. Yes. Mayor Batikiotis. Yes. Uh, same approach on Ordinance 2022-05. Uh, Mr. Trask, if you could read that by title. This is Ordinance 2022-05, an ordinance of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, amending the official zoning atlas of the City of Tarpon Springs for 0 0.92 acres, more or less, of real, pro real property located at 38652 U.S. Highway 19 North on the northwest corner of U.S. Highway 19 North and Clausman Road from Pinellas County Zoning Designation CP Commercial Parkway to City of Tarpon Springs Zoning Designation HB Highway Pro uh, I'm sorry Highway Business Application Number 21-170 providing for findings and providing for an effective date. There will be a second reading of this ordinance of September 13th, 2022. This was published in the Tampa Bay Times by title with a map on July 6th, 2022, and will be published again on August 31st, 2022. Thank you. We'll take the same approach that the staff and applicant reports apply to this, as well as the comments that you heard earlier. If I could get a motion to approve in a second, please. Motion to approve ordinance 2022-05. Make it a second. I'll second. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner comments, uh, Vice Mayor Lund. No comment at this time. Commissioner Eisner. No comment. Commissioner no comment. Cuyas. Okay, roll call, please. Commissioner Cuyas. Yes. Commissioner Eisner. Yes. Vice Mayor Lund. Yes. Mayor Batikiotis. Yes. Now we're going to go on to the, um, the billboard application 2022-68. Um, we're going to begin with um, ordinance number one, 2022-19. The quasi-judicial process will also count for the uh, following two ordinances as well. So, um, Mr. Trask, if you could read the ordinance by title, give us the um, instructions for the quasi-judicial process and swear in any, res any witnesses that haven't been sworn in already. This is Ordinance 2022-19, an ordinance of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, annexing 25 square feet, more or less, of real property located on the northwest corner of U.S. Highway 19 North and East Klosterman Road. Application 22-68, providing for findings and providing an effective date. Uh, there will be a second reading of this ordinance on September 30th, I'm sorry, September 13th, 2022. This was published in the Tampa Bay Times by title only on June 29th, 2022 and July 6, 2022. This is a quasi-judicial uh, proceeding where the Board of Commissioners acts in a quasi-judicial rather than a legislative capacity. At a quasi-judicial hearing, it's not the Board's function to make law, but rather apply law that's already been established. In a quasi-judicial hearing, the board is required by law to make findings of fact based upon the evidence presented at the hearing and apply those findings of fact to previously established criteria contained in the code of ordinances in order to make a legal decision regarding the application before it. The board may only consider evidence at this hearing that the law considers competent, substantial, and relevant to the issues. If the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates the applicant has met the criteria established in the code of ordinances, then the board is required by law to find in favor of the applicant. By the same token, if the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence of the hearing demonstrates the applicant has failed to meet the criteria established in the Code of Ordinances, then the Board is required by law to find against the applicant. Anyone that wants to speak on this particular agenda item, if you've not already been sworn, if you could stand up, raise your right hand to be sworn under oath. Anyone additional? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. I'm going to ask these questions in case anyone arrives since the first uh application, are there any uh, one that um, claims to be an affected party that's arrived sub subsequent to the first application? I presume commissioners still have not had any ex party communication since the first application. <laughs> All right. Um, Ms. Vincent, uh, if your first app presentation is going to count for this one, yes, sir. then just state that for the record. Yes, I would just uh, enter my previous presentation and the agenda back up uh, into the record uh, for this particular item. 
Okay. Um, do you, does any commissioner have questions for um, Mrs. Vincent? No questions. None. Mr. Cugli uh, Commissioner Kuliasa, none? Okay. Um, the applicant, would you like to come forward? And if you have anything to say, you don't have anything, okay. Uh, let's go to public comment on this one. Are there any public comments? Uh, IT, are there any remote access comments? If anyone online would like to speak on this item, please raise your hand. You'll be allowed in. And we do not have any raised hands. Okay, thank you. Um, Ms. Vincent, I didn't ask, but you're going to presume that the, uh, your former um, staff report is going to be entered into evidence for this application as well. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, we're going to close the public meeting, and um, let's... Um, go to any comments commissioners might have I have to ask that question any comments okay um, I'd like to get a, um, a motion for ordinance 2022-19 please motion to approve ordinance 2022-19 second um, any comments roll call please Commissioner Kuyas yes Commissioner Eisner yes Vice Mayor Lunt yes Mayor Vatikiotis yes um, now get a, um, a motion and a second on ordinance 2022-20. Let me go ahead and read that by title. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Trask. So, Mayor, this is 2022-20, uh, an ordinance of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, amending the future land use map for 25 square feet more or less of real property located at the northwest corner of U.S. Highway 19 North and East Glossman Road from Pinellas County Land Use Designation ROR, Residential Office Retail, to City of Tarpon Springs Land Use Designation CG, com uh, Commercial General, application 22-68, providing for findings and providing for an effective date. There'll be a second reading of this ordinance on September 13th, 2022. This was published in the Tampa Bay Times by title with a map on June 29th, 2022 and July 6th, 2022. Okay, if there are no uh, commission comments, if I could get a motion to approve in a second, please. Motion to approve ordinance 2022-20. Second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Kuyas? Yes. Commissioner Eisner? Yes. Vice Mayor Lunt? Yes. Mayor Vatikiotis? Yes. Uh, Mr. Trask, if you could read ordinance 2022-21 by title. Yes, this is ordinance 2022-21, an ordinance of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, amending the official zoning atlas of the City of Tarpon Springs for 25 square feet more or less of real property located at the northwest corner of U.S. Highway 19 North and East Clausman Road from Pinellas County Zoning Designation CP, com uh, Commercial Parkway, to City of Tarpon Springs Zoning Designation HB, Highway Business, application number 22-68, providing for findings and providing for an effective date. Uh, there will be a second reading of this ordinance on September 13th, 2022. This was published in the Tampa Bay Times by title only with a map um, on June 29th, 2022 and July 6th, 2022. Okay, thank you. Um, may I have a motion and a second to approve 2022-21, please? Motion to approve ordinance 2022-21, amending zoning atlas from Pinellas County Commercial Parkway to City of Tarpon Springs Highway Business. Second. Okay. Roll call, please. Commissioner Kuyas? Yes. Commissioner Eisner? Yes. Vice Mayor Lunt? Yes. Mayor Vatikiotis? Yes. That ends our uh, agenda on ordinances and resolutions. Um, we're going to go back to the uh, special consent agenda. Do any of the commissioners need a break? You do. You want to raise hands? <laughs> you do. Yes. 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 Okay. Be forceful. <laughs> All right. We're going to adjourn for um, 10 minutes and we'll re reconvene at um, 828. <laughs> One finger or two? <laughs>
8 p.m. <coughs> the next two items are board appointments. Uh, item 11 is appointment to the Planning and Zoning Board. Um, we've got the information in our backup as far as the applicants and also um, it's laid out. Um, let me just go down the, um, uh, the, the commission by seniority and, and ask for recommendations. Vice Mayor Lunt. Um, I'm sorry, you're looking for recommendations? For the Planning and Zoning Board. Um, this is often not as easy as it looks on the, on the top. Uh, my recommendation is basically based on um, our current alternates attendance at meetings. Um, having said that, um, my, my uh, recommendation is to appoint Georgiana Francis uh, to fill the unexpired term of uh, Jim Stavropoulos. Stavropoulos. Is a, uh, is a, is a permanent member, not a, not, not a, um, I'm sorry, uh, not as a, an alternate, but as a permanent member. Yes, I understand. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Eisner. Same. Same. Okay. Commissioner Cuyas. Uh, I agree with Vice Mayor and Commissioner Eisner. Okay. Um, that's fine with me as well. Um, Let's, um, let's go to public comments. Are there any comments on this item? For the alternate too? Oh, do we need an alternate? Yeah. Well, I think it remains, hang on a second. Hey, hang on, Mr. Uh, Roboski. You need an alternate too, correct? Well, I think right. that remains as Mr. Andrew Otis. Is if that they, correct? They went with option two, so the, the alternate would remain as is, which is Mr. Andriotis. Gotcha. Okay. Just want to make sure. Yeah. Go ahead, Mr. Roboski. Chris Roboski, 1602 Gulf Beach Boulevard, Tarpon Springs, 34689. Uh, excellent choice. I'd uh, just like to congratulate you on uh, getting that. I also would like to announce that I believe I'm term limited out for the Board of Adjustment, so you're going to need to, to replace uh, me on the Board of Adjustment as of October. I was hoping it would be you, uh, but I guess you're going to be on planning and zoning now. So uh, anybody out there listening, please uh, put in applications for the Board of Adjustment. For clarification, you're resigning as of October? Well, I believe I'm term limited out. Oh, term limited so, out. Okay. Right. I understand. 10,000 years is a long time, you know. <laughs> so I, I figure it's time to do so. Thank you for uh, your... Thank you for your service, Mr. Robotsky. <laughs> right. I, I know it's been a long it's been, uh, journey for it's you. It's been a while. Thank you. All right. Are there any other uh, public comments? IT, are there any remote access comments? If anyone, if anyone online, online would like to speak, speak on this item, please, please raise your hand, hand and you'll be allowed in. And we do not have any raised hands. Okay, thank you. Um, I'd like to have a formal motion and a second, please. Motion to appoint Georgiana Francis to fill the unexpired term of Jim Stavropoulos, a regular member. This term will expire October 1st, 2023. Second. Okay, roll call, please. Commissioner Kouyas? Yes. Commissioner Eisner? Yes. Vice Mayor Lund? Yes. Mayor Vatikiotis? Yes. Uh, congratulations, Ms. Frenzies. Okay. Let's move on to... Um, Item 12, appoint, uh, appointment to the Code Enforcement Board. Um, again, I'd like to start with Vice Mayor Lund as far as seniority goes. Um, no. Recommendation to appoint Stephen Ogle to fill the alternate number two position. Okay. Commissioner Eisner. Same. Commissioner Cuyas. I agree with Vice Mayor and Commissioner Eisner. Okay, thank you. Um, are there any public comments concerning this item? Uh, appointment to the Code Enforcement Board. Uh, IT, are there any remote access comments concerning this item? IT, are there any remote Anyone access? Like to speak on this item, please raise your hand and be allowed in. And we do not have any raised hands at this time, sir. Thank you. Um, we have a motion and a second on that appointment, please. Motion to appoint Stephen Ogle to fill the alternate number two position. I'll second. Okay, roll call, please. Commissioner Kouyas? Yes. Commissioner Eisner? Yes. Vice Mayor Lund? Yes. 
Mayor Batikiotis. Yes. Okay, item um, 13, uh, settlement of the code enforcement lien 38945 U.S. Highway 19 North. I'm going to turn that over to Mr. Trask. Thank you, Mayor. Um, in your packet, you've got um, a memorandum from me dated August 16th, along with some progress notes and an offer of settlement and a request for fine reduction by Mr. Pullman, the attorney, that it currently represents the new property owner. You remember that this was the Los, Los Mexicanos restaurant. It fell into a state of disrepair. There was a number of code violations um, on the property, including overgrowth, uh, in-op cars, um, and uh, failure to maintain the building, some of it which, of course, um, fell off. The roof portion of the roof fell off before it was eventually demolished. Uh, the property sold at an auction um, late last year. The new property owner went in and demolished the building, well, the majority of it. They're going to use the standing walls there as part of the new project that they're building. Um, as a direct result of the new owner coming into possession, he did go before the Code Enforcement Board, Mr. Perlman did, um, asked for a fine reduction last week. The Code Enforcement Board denied that fine reduction, and then I immediately received an offer of settlement. The offer of settlement I received was in the amount of $30,000. Uh, the total due on this code enforcer, these code enforcement liens is $92,767.06. So I'm bringing this offer of settlement to you for your consideration and approval. Thank you. Um, are there any public comments concerning this matter? IT, are there any remote access comments? If anyone online, online would like to speak on this side, side, please raise your hand and be allowed in. And we do, we do not, not have any raised hands, hands at this time, time sir. sir. Okay, thank you. Okay, the item goes to the commissioners, uh, commission, or Vice Mayor Lunt. Do you have any comments? I have no comments. Commissioner Eisner. Yes, I do. We have 58 pages of uh, violations back and forth. I'm curious why we accept the first offer that we get. I have a legal obligation to bring to you the offer that has been provided. That's the reason you're getting the offer. If it's not acceptable to you, I'd be happy to go back to, to the property owner and tell him what you would be willing to take for the property, but he has offered $30,000. Uh, I don't really have any other comments for you other than trying to get this one behind us. And, um, and by the way, the progress notes are basically a lot of notes reflecting the, uh, the, what has happened to the property to get it cleaned up and letters that have been transmitted into the system so it makes it look a little bit longer than it normally is. But I wanted, you to, prov I wanted to provide you with the entire report so you had it. So um, I'm bringing you the offer. Um, I didn't make the offer, he made the offer and so I have a legal obligation to bring it to you and that's why it's here. So these are not, because usually when you bring it, it's a recommendation for um, this, so this is not a recommendation, this is just a, um, whether we agree or not agree or... My um, recommendation is to approve it, yeah. Do you also, do you also bring a uh, cost to how much it costs to litigate this versus um, all of the correspondence back and forth? Um, so this is not in litigation at this point, and so... I, you know, unless and until the, the commission directs me to file a foreclosure action to foreclose on this property to collect the lien, I wouldn't be doing that. Um, as for how much is involved cost-wise, there would be a couple of hours worth of attorney time, uh, but otherwise it would be city staff time. And some um, costs involved in relation to um, the recording of the lien, and I, I do have that in the packet. Uh, there is a printout like four or five pages in. The prosecution cost, which was the city expenses, $214. Interest was $990.06. The administrative fee was $25. To record the actual lien in the, when it occurred a couple of years ago was $28. And the satisfaction for me to prepare and record the lien in the public records is $10. So those costs are set forth in that spreadsheet. <coughs> um, it's actually a, a printout from um, the city clerk's office, dated August 15th. So that's in <clears throat> legal fees, but it's not in staff time as well. Prosecution costs is the staff time. That's your staff, though. No, it's the city staff time. Okay. Yeah. Because I'm just, 
it, you know what? If we are getting, um, if we're putting ninety thousand dollar fines on it, and always accepting thirty thousand or fifteen thousand or five thousand, which is what I've been seeing as a routine, um, it, it defeats the purpose of having a code enforcement uh, uh, lean on something. Uh, I just don't see that we should, you know, unless this is a very difficult case that could go forward, I don't know, understand why we're accepting that. That's my statement. That's it for right? Yes. Second. Okay. Commissioner Kuyash. I, I have a couple questions for uh, City Attorney. Do we have what the fine reduction amount that was presented to the Code Enforcement Board in which it was denied? So um, the attorney filed a request on July 5th, and um, he's just asking for some consideration to reduce the fine. Um, normally, in the past, city staff has made a recommendation as to you know, what city staff would be willing to support. In this particular case, um, city staff did not make a recommendation. Okay. And that's the last page of uh, Mr. Perlman's letter, or it should be in the packet, city's response to fine reduction <coughs> request. If it's not there, I can pass it down. Yeah, and that's okay. Uh, how long will they have to pay this uh, fine if we agree to the 30,000? Well, you can uh, tell me when you want it paid. So for example, you say they need to pay the 30,000 within 10 days, and should they not pay it within 10 days, it reverts back to the original dollar amount. So my suggestion is, is that, you know, that we put a deadline on it. What do you think is a reasonable deadline? I think it's going to be paid within a couple of days of today, uh, tomorrow once I tell them that. Um, but I think 10 days is a reasonable period of time. Okay. Uh, I, I understand the, the high fees, but this is a, a new property owner. Uh, they've done their best through the records to, to comply and get this property uh, in compliance, which has cost them a lot of money as well. I think they're, they've reached out to us in good faith to try to make a, a reasonable amount, and $30,000 is a lot of money. And if we can get that paid within 10 days and uh, move on from this issue, uh, I think it's benefit to both the property owner and uh, the city. So I would, I would uh, recommend approving the $30,000. I have a question now. <laughs> oh, it's the last question. Um, this property was bought at auction, I think, last November sometime. Yes. When it was purchased at auction, were they aware that there was a lien attached to the property? Yes. That's, um, Mr. Trask, is there any time frame that the, um, the current property owners asked us to get this resolved? No, the, the current property owner knows that this was coming to the commission tonight through his attorney. Um, I, I let the attorney know that this was coming forward, but there is no deadline. It's you're in control of right, whatever happens there. And, but, and there's no one here that you're aware of. That Mr. Perlman is not in the audience. We did not see him here. Okay. Uh, would it be helpful, since there isn't a deadline, to get some additional information as far as what the new owner's plans are for this property before we make a decision? That makes sense to me. I mean, I don't. I appreciate you know, Mr. Trask is the messenger here. And I always like to see what kind of, um, as the vacation was the last time on Capuchet, what their plans were. And I didn't really see anything. And that kind of bothered me. And I wouldn't mind whether they're going to put this back, um, flip it, if you will, and, and then, um, or whether um, um, they've actually got plans to uh, make the improvements and, and then lease it if they're not going to operate anything out of there themselves. Just a little information would be helpful for me. I don't know if that would be okay with you or if you'd want to go ahead and make a, a motion at this point and uh, move ahead with, with a vote on it. Um, you know, actually, one of my first impressions was what are they going to do with the property now that they've half demolished it? Um, and you're right, I'm not quite sure whether they're going to flip it or develop it, but I am sure now that they were aware that there was a $90,000 lien on the property when they purchased it, yeah. and I'm sure that was part of their purchasing criteria would be for me. So I'm, I'm willing to wait for additional information. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Eisner, do you have any thoughts on that? Yes, I agree. Uh, I think we should also wait because um, 
I need to restore um, our code enforcement um, fees if we're not going to um, stand by what the fees are. Listen, if somebody has a hardship, I'm willing to listen. But when you go into a, a, a purchase and you know it's got a $93,000 uh, lien on it, you have to know that, I mean, it's, it's a gift to give it to them for $30,000. And I don't really, it, it doesn't pay to put a code enforcement uh, fee on anything if that's the way we're going to handle it, it. It never hurts to ask questions? Sure. Okay. So I, I have no problem waiting to ask questions, okay. of course. Thank you. Commissioner Cuyas. Well, I just I think we're micromanaging that we got a deal on the table. I think we need to take it. Uh, we're, you know, we're, we're basically punishing a new property owner who's come in compliance with the property, whatever they want to do with it. You know, we've made settlements, whether with private, private individuals who own properties to a lot less. And uh, I just think, uh, you know, it's ongoing issue. And, 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 you know, what code enforcement fines happened from 10, 15 years ago, it's, it's so irrelevant to the fact that we're trying to get this squared away now. And it's $30,000, properties come in compliance, it's a new owner, spent a lot of money whether they knew, I mean, there's usually a thought process and it's, you know, goes without saying that what, what there's some liens out there that the city's willing to work with new property owners. We've seen it happen before in the past. And so I, I would recommend this board accept the $30,000 and move forward. Okay. Um, Mayor. Mr. Trask, um, as far as uh, we really didn't have any negotiation on this, it was just an offer by the, uh, by the property owner, the current property owner. That's correct. And I wanted to bring your attention also, there are two documents in the backup that specifically says that the property owner now has demolished the property, delivered the site plans that he had prepared and forwarded them to the code enforcement department. So that would reflect that he has an intention of building a new building. Recording in progress. Um, and it's my understanding that the two walls that are up there are part of that new building site plan process, but those plans have been delivered to code enforcement according to the attorney. We, we don't have those. Um, they haven't gone to planning, but they've gone to code enforcement. Yeah, that, that, that to me showed that there was some intent by the current property owner after buying it and demolishing the, prop, yeah. the building that he right. is going to build another um, building on the site. Just, yeah. just to give a little more comfort level to uh, see if we can get a, a consensus on this, um, um, I would like to see what they're actually planning on doing and then um, I don't necessarily have, a, have an objection to $30,000, but, but I, I can share with you why I'm a little hesitant because there was a, a sale of a property to uh, a restaurant owner here where we were asked for a reduction in a code enforcement fine. And we agreed to it thinking that it was going to go to the restaurant owner that was going to put the property to use. It actually went to the prop person actually selling the property, which is when the one created the, the code enforcement violations to begin with. And I learned a very valuable lesson at that. Ask, if you're not sure, I would have, if it was going to the restaurant owner that was buying the property for their use, I'd be, that'd be basically money being put back into Tarpon Springs, but this, this, the, what we did was actually put money into the uh, into the uh, person that sold the property, and and they're gone. We we did the same thing, just two weeks ago or three weeks ago for that for that um, residential property where the actual full amount was in escrow. Yeah, and we reduced it by two thirds or yeah. more. So I, I I feel a little more comfortable. Just I don't have an issue with the thirty thousand. I just like to know a little more about what their plans are. Uh, rather than just soft plans, or they're actually going to plan on developing something. Um, before we uh, have a motion on this, uh, Mr. Trask, um, a pro an appropriate way would be to defer the item. Is that correct? If this is what the, it would be a motion to defer, if that's what the it, commission would wish to do. It would be a motion uh, to postpone to a date certain. If, you'd, if you wanted to not bring it back on a certain date, then it would be a motion to table, and that would mean it would be indefinitely, it would sit out there indefinitely. I, I would suggest maybe September 13th, if that's what the commission, was that, okay. Um, 
if I could get a, um, a motion, if this is the way the, the who's ever going to be making the motion wants to go, a motion to uh, defer, to defer the item to September 13th. The regular commission meeting of December 13th, uh, September 13th. Motion to defer to September, was it 13th? Mm -hmm. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Further, without any, any further questions, comments? Okay. Roll call, please. Commissioner Kuyas? Yes. Commissioner Eisen? Yes. Vice Mayor Lunt? Yes. Mayor Vatikiotis? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Trask. You're welcome. Okay. The, um, the next item, uh, 14, was deferred to a date to be determined in the future. That's the, um, the Ho Sponge Docks Hotel, to kind of simplify <coughs> how to describe it. Um, item 15 is um, reinstatement of street vacation fee or privilege fee for vacating and abandoning uh, city rights of way. That's something I brought forward um, after the experience of um, the, the Capuchet Way um, request and, and I went back and looked into um, the history of how that Kachaput, Kachaput way Kachaput way was um, vacated the first time around and, and all the histories in your backup and then I actually went back to find out when we um, uh, eliminated the uh, the privilege fee or the street vacation fee and that was in 2019 so everything is spelled out in there. I've got some, um, con not concerns, but basically um, I just, in my opinion, I don't think it needed to be um, eliminated, the street vacation fee back in 2019 uh, to accomplish the purpose of why it was eliminated. And um, I'd like to um, consider at least hear your thoughts on reinstating it. And um, it may not look like what the fee, the ordinance looked like in, in uh, 2019 prior to being changed, but that would be something that um, Mr. Trask would get together if he agrees to get together with his team and, and kind of find a way of crafting an ordinance that might be a little more um, up to date than what it was 29 years ago when it was first put on the book. So um, let me uh, go to the public comments on this if you've had an opportunity to look at the backup it's a little bit of a, a technical sort of issue but if there are any public comments um, if you'd like to come forward now Chris Roboski 1602 Gulf Beach Boulevard Tarpon Springs 34689 I mean frankly I <clears throat> I was appalled to see the email uh, chain that was at the end of the backup material. And so that, and I got to go back to the last meeting for the Kajaput Way. I had to leave this building and go somewhere, and I had to zoom it in. But I thought the attorney told you that you couldn't charge for, uh, for land that was vacated. And... Uh, <clears throat> So I was puzzled by that because the, the young lady that spoke before I did over the phone, she had said put a condition on it to get some money and I, I said, yeah, I echo that, that sentiment that we should get paid, it's land, we should get paid for it as a city. Um, but your legal representation was telling you no and saying basically uh, that it, I mean, it wasn't necessarily even a legal thing, it sounded like it was just, it, it, it wouldn't be right. So <clears throat> I was glad to see that other cities are actually charging and it seems pretty standard. Uh, but that's the kind of advice that I was talking about that will likely make its way into Mr. Colson's bar complaint. Um, especially since Ed Armstrong was writing emails to the city manager, to the city attorney, telling you guys to give him free land basically. 200 bucks, he's gonna get all this free land, I guess is how that went. The emails weren't complete. But it seemed as if Mr. Armstrong was making this happen. And then the, the advice you were getting from your attorney was, well, there are these other cities that don't charge. And then my first thought was, well, are these cities that Ed and Trask are doing the same game? So they can get free land all around the county? And then using those examples of giving free land to justify why you should do it. 
I hope that's not the case. But that's pretty alarming stuff. And something's got to be done about it. So again, if you're not going to ask the man to resign, I mean, you at least got to put an RFP out there, get some other applicants in, and, and at least get this man off of Clay Colson's case. Now, Jane Graham, she can speak for herself and her clients, um, whether she wants to do that or not. But it just doesn't seem right. Uh, you know, Clay can't make it to these meetings, so he asked me to come out here and, and, and speak for him as best I can. And we've got a bunch of volunteers doing stuff. And, uh, you know, all I'm saying is um, it, <laughs> something definitely doesn't smell right. I think that's even what the, the attorney told you, that it wouldn't smell right to charge money for that land. It doesn't smell right to not charge for it. To give it away seems pretty bizarre to me. So unless I'm missing something, um, <laughs> that should not, that, you guys should fix this. I mean, just, how can it be? And how can it be that Ed Armstrong is de facto running? I mean, maybe if you put that RFP out, he'll apply. Because he's already kind of doing that job. So, <clears throat> I just sort of dumbfounded. And again, going back to the attorney's fees issue, if there are any attorneys listening, uh, Mr. Colson would like some help with this KETAM business, whether or not it can apply to uh, municipalities, and if there's a, some other mechanism of receiving this money, you know, if you have an, uh, your internal auditor go in, or we, you know, one of these attorneys hires an auditor, it might not just be drive time that was overcharged, could be a lot more of other things, and that can be discovered, and that can be uh, brought back to the people. Thank you. Okay. Uh, are there any other uh, public comments? Lita Protus, 901 Bayshore Drive. I am sick and tired of hearing the attacks on our attorney. If you're going to listen to him attack our attorney, then you need to figure out if his facts are, are substantial. This is wrong, Mayor. I have never in all the years come except for one mayor in this town, and we had repercussions from it, attack attorneys and people on the board. It's terrible. It's shameful. So if this man, Mr. Herboski, can come up here and attack our attorney, who is a well-respected attorney and has done well for Tarpon Springs, then you as commissioners need to appoint somebody to investigate the facts that he's bringing forward. This is disgusting tonight, and it has been disgusting in weeks past, asking people to resign, tell you, telling them, telling you to re make people resign. No, this is not what we're about here. This is terrible. Are there any other public comments? David Ballard Geddes, Jr., uh, Georgia Avenue, Palm Harbor. Um, I'm not quite so sure I understand the, the breadth of, of all of this privilege fee. Um, I do know that I ran across an executive order, Executive Order 13406, and in Executive Order 13406, it said something about acquiring abandoned or vacated property. Um, I don't know if this is relative to that, um, but uh, I do feel as though it was worth bringing to the board. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Geddes. Um, any other public comments? I IT, are there any uh, remote access comments? If anyone online would like to speak on the side, please raise your hand and you'll be allowed in. And we do not have any raised hands at this time, sir. Okay, let's go to the, uh, thank you. Uh, let's go to the commission. Vice Mayor Lunt, do you have any thoughts on this? Um, so, I understand the original intention of removing this was to alleviate some of the financial pressure um, for the, the housing authority. Um, albeit, um, I think we could have approached that in a different manner. 
um, with the same result for them. Um, I've read through most of this material actually a few times. Um, I still come to the sort of conclusion, and even though I'm not a lawyer, that I wouldn't have come to the same conclusion. So um, my take on all this is we should put it back in, whether we call it a uh, whatever charge. It, it doesn't really, the nomenclature doesn't matter to me, but I think if we own um, a street, for example, outright, if it's not just an easement that somebody's granted to us, if we actually have, have fee simple over that property, then that's a value to the city, that city property, we should be able to charge for that in some manner. Um, so that's my stand. All right. Uh, Commissioner Eisner. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm also in agreement that it should be put back. Um, I don't understand why it was illegal, but not illegal for the six counties that are right now getting 100%, 80%, 80%, 90%, and Madeira Beach, which our city attorney represents or has represented at 100%. So um, if it's legal for them, it has to be legal for us to, in some respect. Whether you don't want to use it as a word of sale, um, I understand that, but we pay for land and we should be able to receive something when we give land away. Um, to charge $200 application fee for something that's worth um, 80,000, 100,000 or more, um, it would make everybody want to try it for $200. There's no hindrance to, uh, you have nothing to lose. And I think that's a mistake. What I have bigger issues is with people that don't read the backup material and question facts. Because in here, we have a letter from Heather Ertwiller, who was prior to Renee, and she writes, I spoke, I, she wrote this to Mark LaCorris, I spoke with Pat and will follow up with an email for your benefit. Here's how things go down. Unless Ed, meaning Ed Armstrong, convinces Tom otherwise. So I'm not understanding why there's conversation between our city attorney and a city attorney. I, I don't even know what Ed Armstrong does, who he represents. Did we pay him then? Is he part of our city? Um, and there's a whole list of things. Pat will coordinate with the P&Z. Pat will get the ordinance title and ad ready for legal. Pat will send the ad to the paper by no later than Tuesday. Um, everyone take a breath and relax. These are all words that I don't like. I get back from Maryland on Monday, March 25th, and it'll be okay until then. What'll be okay till then? You have lots more important things to take care of right now than this. Make sure you focus on the right things. I'll be sending a few extra prayers your way. Try to have a great week. Um, from Mark back to Heather. Thank you, I called Ed Armstrong, talked to him about initiating an agenda item. I'll work with Bob Cochin and, Bob, and Pat. Monday to work out all the details. Ed will be calling Tom Trask on Monday as he thinks he has a legal argument that could be another avenue. I'm still going ahead until I hear otherwise with our plan. No worries, enjoy the conference. Now, I could read all of these emails. Um, there's uh, this one from, this is to Tom Trask. Why did we strike section 21601 standards for review? Just wanted to change the fee. Also, I'm supposed to call you later today to coordinate after your talk with Ed Armstrong. Why is our city attorney speaking to Ed Armstrong? Chief Coach will be f filling in for Mark tomorrow night, and I'm supposed to coordinate back with him after I talk with you. I have the P&Z tonight, so here for the duration and flexible on time to talk. Thank you again. Um, uh, this is Pat to Tom Trask. I believe you're aware we're looking at the possibility of revising the ROW vacation ordinance in order to make the advertisement deadline. 
we want to have an ordinance ready in case the BOC wants to go that route. Could you please take a look at this draft ordinance? And as soon as possible, mark it up for me, especially whereas is section 21601. Uh, the crux of the change is to remove the land valuation, appraised value calculation component from the fee. My plan is to get the ad out to the newspaper by 10 a.m. Um, I have got it. Thanks, Pat. Then we have um, Trask to Pat. We don't need to revise or delete 216 from the LDC. It's fine the way it reads. It should not be included in the ordinance since we're not revising slash amending it. Thanks. Um, thanks, Tom. Did we strike section 216 standards for review? Just wanted to change the fee. Also, I'm supposed to call you later to coordinate after you talk with Ed Armstrong. I need to know why our city attorney is speaking to Ed Armstrong. Um, that's my question and there's just Pages and pages and pages. I read all this. I, this is an email from Ed Armstrong to Tom Trask. Thank you, Tom. Very much appreciated. What is he thanking you for that's so appreciated? So Tom writes back to Ed Armstrong. Ed, as a follow-up to our telephone conversation this morning, I wanted you to know that city staff has prepared an ordinance that, pr that removes the fee related to the value of the property. What property are we talking about? Is there properties that somebody removed the property values that we don't know? Um, the fee in the ordinance would be limited to $200. This is like a gold mine. Somebody handed you a lottery ticket. It's being sent to the newspaper tomorrow for publication. I don't have the hearing dates yet. Tom. Ed Armstrong, here's the ROW deed into the city. I would love to hear what my city attorney spoke with Tom, with Ed Armstrong about, if he wouldn't mind. Um, we 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 can do that. Um, I mean, I'm not. I would just like a little, cons I'm going to ask some consideration on the commission. Um, my point of including those emails, um, I, what you're saying is absolutely true. You write them verbatim, but um, I wasn't there and, um, and there's some other issues. I'm not defending anybody, but the purpose of my bringing those forward is to demonstrate uh, in my mind that I think that there was a sense of urgency back then. I think that things were rushed through. The commission wasn't given any options of what to do other than to eliminate the fee. I think that the project was a, a very valid project. It was our housing authority with Eagle Crest uh, apartments that they had the ribbon cutting uh, for not too long ago. I don't have an issue with a vacating or, or eliminating the fee for them, just as St. Lucie County does. There's some discretion with the county uh, commission on that. I don't have any issue with all of that. Uh, all I'm asking is that um, I would like for the commission to, to consider um, reinstating in some form the ordinance um, and we're not selling anything. It, it's, I mean, the property rights issue as, um, um, are quite complicated and I, I went through the, um, uh, let, let me just finish that. I would, I would like to get through this discussion first and then maybe we can return to what you're asking. Is that, is that okay? I am flexible. Okay, thank you. Um, Commissioner Kulias. I'm, I'm all for supporting some type of fee to, you know, whatever we're, we're going to call it or label it. Uh, I'm just curious to see as we saw different examples. Or we, uh, there are some properties and, and, you know, potential vacations of, of nearby where are we allowed to charge a premium off of, you know, the face value or market value of the property? Not right now. Okay, well, I mean, I'd be willing to support some type of fee, and if we can get at least 100%, that would be great. Okay, let, let me weigh in on this. So, and Mr. Trask, in fairness to him, I want him to, to kind of weigh in on it as well. 
I, I read the, the legal memorandum that was provided three years ago, and basically I understand what it said. Basically the city doesn't have any right to be paid for other than what it owns or what its, private, its rights are. But the question was is to determine what those rights are, and that's the key. And we can have a gentleman come forward or an applicant come forward to vacate something and says, okay, I, I've got this abutting property, I want you to vacate this. In the past, we've simply accepted that. But there's some case law in the memorandum that, um, the, that Mr. Trask provided that basically when the uh, city tried to do to vacate property to the benefit of the state, a homeowners association intervened and sued both the city and the state because it wasn't their property or the city's right or, the, or because the state was a budding property. It, wasn't, it, it simply didn't allow them to assume that they owned it. So they went back and they, they, there was some argument as to whether it would revert to the homeowners association. So how do you demonstrate that? The, the other part of these uh, legal documents is the way I read them is that um, in order to determine the correct ownership and whether the city's got any rights or not, whether the applicant's got rights or whether some third party's got rights, um, we can't tell the, the applicant to go do that. And or should, would we smart enough to accept what the applicant does? The proper way is to go to court and have the court take information, in my opinion, from what I read, from the applicant and then deem that that ap applicant actually owns the property or, and there's some risk associated with that, that maybe they don't. What I think I've seen in terms of these privilege fees and state, state um, uh, street vacation fees is, is kind of a compromise and say, okay, well, um, we're not sure what's what, so this is how we're gonna approach it. This is the fee that we would like to be paid in exchange for approving that land to be rejoined with yours without really getting into the details of whether you have the rights to do that or not. That's the sense I got from all of this. And, and um, I think as I stated in my memorandum, I, I think that that may be some basis for why these other jurisdictions are, are stu still doing it and they haven't been, at least to the best of my knowledge, challenged on all of that. Um, the rest of what happened in 2019, I wasn't there. Um, I'm glad the, the Eagle Crest apartments were built. I just, for me, it was just unfortunate that we changed the ordinance. I'm not saying it could have been updated. I would have allowed for an update to take place where we would have left some street vacation fee in place and provide perhaps some discretion to the commission in order to make determinations as far as out and out public interest. Um, and, and, and we just don't, we have that, but we don't have any ability to, um, um, at this point, the ordinance has changed. We just basically, an applicant comes forward and we, we make a decision of whether it's, we, we don't have a need for the property and whether it's in the public interest that we vacate it. Those are the two, two standards. So that's why I think that at this point, I'd like to revisit that and not approve anything obviously tonight in terms of an ordinance, but to allow Mr. Trask to take another look at that, go back and craft another ordinance, maybe not looking like what was there in the past, but something new based on what his research is telling us that maybe we can, um, we can, we can, um, w what we can actually have as an ordinance. Um, in fairness to Mr. Trask, he did state in 2019 that the ordinance was not unlawful. Um, he felt that he could not um, defend the ordinance if it was challenged in court. On the other hand, he wasn't sure who would challenge it anyway. So I, I just want to leave that and, and leave the personalities out of it and just um, um, uh, basically uh, address the issue as I'm bringing it forward this evening. So, um, Mr. Trask, if you'd like to make some comments. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to make some comments. First of all, the memo of March 20th, 2019 specifically sets forth the law on this. I'm not a backseat attorney. I am a licensed to practice law. And the, the research that I provided was, this, was the law at the time, and it currently is the time. It, it is the law. And 
It all starts with a Florida Supreme Court case of Roni Investments Company versus the City of Miami Beach out of nine, from 1937. And this is the Florida Supreme Court talking about this issue right here. And what did the Florida Supreme Court say? It says, it is recognized that a city has no power to sell or barter the streets and alley which it holds and trusts for the benefit of the public and cannot vacate a street for the benefit of a purely private interest. That Supreme Court case was cited in the memorandum. In addition to that, the Timber Homeowners Association case, it is a Division of Administrative Hearings case. And in that particular case, the order that was entered provides the city cannot sell the property to be abandoned to the state or charge the state for granting its application for abandonment and the appraised value of the property to be abandoned should not be a factor in deciding whether or not to grant the application. That's the case law. As for municipal, uh, the law of municipal corporations, it provides a municipality is not entitled to compensation for loss of a public easement in streets in which it does not own the fee and it cites the McCutcheon versus Terminal Station Commission of the City of Buffalo. And then it continues on. It thus follows, where a street is vacated by a court on the application of abutting home, uh, landowners, the municipality has no such proprietary interest therein to entitle it to compensation. And it refers to several other cases. That's the case law. And that, that in addition to the Attorney General opinion, which I talked about off the cuff the last meeting that I remembered, the Attorney General opinion of 1978, that's 78-125, the Assistant Attorney General, Patricia Gleason, uh, opined that the city cannot charge for vacating right-of-way. With all that being said, I understand the issue of charging a fee, a privilege fee of some sort. When I did the memo back in 2019, that was my concern was, is it needed to be in some way commensurate with uh, the cost the city incurs in processing the application, maybe it's more than $200, maybe it's some other fee, I don't know. But what my concern at the time was is that the Supreme, Florida Supreme Court and all these other decisions have said that we can't do it when it is dedicated to the public. That is different and apart from when we own, the city owns the property um, by fee simple. You have, have every absolute right to sell any property that the city owns in fee simple for the fair market value or whatever, or whatever value that you want to sell it for, but not rights of way that are dedicated to the public. So those were the things that I was concerned about. I don't have an issue with modifying the ordinance. I think that that's absolutely appropriate, Mayor, uh, you know, and we could try to figure out some way that maybe we can maneuver it in such a way that we could probably defend it. Um, and as I mentioned back in 2019, I'm really not sure who in fact would actually contest it, and maybe that's the reason why it hasn't been contested before. Uh, in my opinion, it hasn't changed now. I, I don't know who would possibly contest it, except for maybe the public at large. They don't like what you're doing and maybe file some type of lawsuit to prevent you from charging for that. But I'd be happy to, to look into that. I'd be happy to defend the city. Um, and any action brought uh, on a revised ordinance and I'm here for a direction, but I just want to make it absolutely clear to the public that the law is that if it's a right of way dedicated to the public, you are not entitled to compensation when you vacate that property. And that was the basis of, when that research was done, that was the basis of the memo um, and that was the basis of the change of the ordinance uh, back in 2019. It was for no other reason. And as for my conversations with Mr. Armstrong, I have no idea uh, three years later what those conversations were, but it's not unusual for me to talk to attorneys that are, have applications that are pending before the city to make sure that all the information is available so the commission can make an informed decision. All the, the, uh, the law has been researched. I don't remember what I talked to him about, but more than likely, it was to process the application coming forward and nothing more. I mean, obviously the emails are there and you can see, uh, you didn't read the one where I told him I was not gonna commit to what he wanted uh, done. I was not uh, comfortable with whatever it was at the time, but I specifically said in the email, I was not comfortable in doing what he was requesting. That was skipped over in the, in the review of, of those emails. 
but I, I'm ready and willing and able to, to give I, a shot. I, I, what I'm getting at is that I, you're, the Attorney General's opinion, well, I mean, if we did create the ordinance in 1990, way after the Supreme Court thing. Um, and in the Attorney General's opinion from 78, um, you know, the, the sentence you underlined basically said that um, we, we, the municipality possesses neither statutory nor constitutional authority to exact payment for or otherwise interfere with the property rights of the landowners whose property abuts a public street as a condition to or in exchange for the exercise of the power. I agree with that. Okay. I, that's not even an issue. But the person's got to demonstrate that he actually owns the rights to that right of way that it doesn't revert to some subdivision developer. And I know there's state statutes that there's something that expires in 1972 if that matter wasn't resolved prior to, you know, after or prior to 1972, something is forgiven. I, I don't want to get into all of that. And, and, and also, I don't even know if that we do have any rights to it. All I know is that in my experience in the past, um, we've had property owners come forward, present you know, they just look at the vacated, the, the paper street that's next to theirs. They say they, had the, they have a need for it, and they're asking us to vacate it, and we simply move forward with that, mm -hmm. without any kind of evidence or anything like that. And if it's, the evidence is not clear, I think we would be remiss to simply accept what they're saying with some chance that they're not right, and the only other alternative is to go to a judge and have them, as far as what I understand the process is, go to a judge and determine whether in fact that person actually owns the property or not. I mean, that's, that's the, the process that I, I saw in some of the backup. So I'm not suggesting that we put back in place what we had in, 19, in 2019. I think some of the things that you and I are, and what the commission has taught, well, from the standpoint of what I just described, actually has to be delineated in the ordinance so everybody understands what the playing field is in this matter. And, and I don't have any idea. You are the attorney. I'm not. I'm the backyard attorney. You're the, you're the certified attorney. All I'm saying is we're, based on what I read and going back in the record, I feel that something different could have been done in order to, instead of just eliminating the, the uh, fee altogether, given that we don't know whether we are eliminating the fee for things that we own or whether we're giving land to somebody that he actually doesn't own. I mean, that's basically what we're doing right now, and I'd like to see that fixed, at least that's my opinion on it. So, um, and, and I appreciate you your willingness to work on this. Absolutely, um, absolutely. Uh, on this, so um, let me, um, we had the public comments on this. Let me go back to the commission one more time. Vice Mayor Lunt, do you have any more? Um. I don't know whether Mr. Armstrong was uh, was the attorney for the housing authority at the time or what was he going was. on. And that's he was. Actually, it was his law firm. But yeah, so yeah. that it's irregardless. Yeah. Um, I still think that, especially in cases where we own the property fee simple, we charge for it. Right. That's no right. doubt. We pay for right of ways. We yeah, buy we property for right of ways. I think in the other half where we are not sure if we own it for fee simple. I th think it's something for the courts to determine because this some of the city was plotted way back in God knows when. You know, 1937, I think, was some of it or, or previous to that. And you'd be a better researcher than me if you could figure out who, who actually that belonged to because I believe at the time when it was plotted, the tr transfer to the city. Uh, before we go to Commissioner Eisner, I want to go anything else, Commissioner Kulias, to add? No, I'm looking forward to uh, just move ahead city with city attorney and all right. looking into it all. Thank you, Commissioner Kulias. Commissioner Eisner, I want to get back to <coughs> your, your questions. Thank you. I appreciate what the city attorney explained about the illegality or that we can't sell it. But it still doesn't explain why these other counties can sell it. And since he spoke, I reread every one of the emails, and in not one of the emails does it speak about illegality. It only speaks about context of how they're going to move forward to get this um, $200 application. 
Not one word in there is of uh, that it's illegal, not one word of it um, that it's against our code. I also went back and reviewed the videos of that meeting and I watched the commission who voted on what. And I have to commend Townsend Tarapani because he was not in favor of this um, every which way to Sunday and he gave his argument but he lost. Um, I don't agree that we should be uh, just vacating property for $200. We are, and his comment, as I agree with, when we go to buy it, we have to spend 60000 We spent $60,000 on the yacht club, and that was not to even buy it. It was just to run pipes underneath it. Um, so one way or another, we have to be able to um, charge however that wording is. I'm not a lawyer. I just, you, I will just say that there was nothing in any of these emails about illegality. So I still don't understand why Ed Armstrong was in this conversation, and uh, it, it makes me concerned because uh, he was very instrumental in other projects that came before the board, and uh, when I see his name, it concerns me. Thank you. That's it. Is that it then? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what I'd like to do is get a motion to uh, direct the city attorney to craft a new ordinance um, with a uh, street vacation fee or a privilege fee. Um, and he may have to work, obviously, with the staff. And, and, and um, uh, you know, obviously, you can discuss this with him as well, one on one and at some point come back um, with us with an ordinance that he feels comfortable with as far as the, although it wasn't unlawful to begin with, but, but something that um, would work within the confine of the law as he described it. Is that, if I can, if, that, if the commission agrees, let's have a motion and a second to that effect. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay. A motion to have the city attorney draft a new ordinance addressing <coughs> the uh, right of way or street vacation fee. I'll second that. Okay. All right. Um, any no? If there are no other comments, I'd like roll call, please. Commissioner Cuyas. Yes. Commissioner Eisner. Yes. Vice Mayor Lunt. Yes. Mayor Vatikiotis. Yes. Thank you for everyone's cooperation. Um, let's move on to the um, discussion and direction on Pasco County Anclo River restaurant proposal. Um, that was something that, um, that um, I think caught many of us by surprise. Um, there's the 22,000 square foot uh, ordinance that uh, I'm sorry, restaurant that is uh, being proposed at the mouth of the river. Um, it's going to have active water sports, jet skis, parasailing, at least that's what's in the proposal. Uh, daily music, um, weekend it'll have nightly music as well. I don't know what the hours are. I'm assuming it'll be selling um, alcohol. It has some fairly extensive docks for boaters to come to it. And um, I'm not sure honestly what Pasco County is thinking that's a relatively passive area in the sense of the word knowing that there's boats that actually travel back and forth it's not quiet but it is a passive area in terms of the park uh, as far as swimming picnicking launching your boat retrieving your boat um, it isn't this you know hodgepodge of um, other water sports activities there are a number of jet skis out there and I think any of, a, of your boaters know what what that brings as far as getting in and out of the river at that location um, and I wanted to get the thoughts of what the residents were as well and we you know I did put a Facebook post out there and and got a, a kind of a mixed review um, I think what I would be looking for out of this is um, one thought was to draft a letter uh, to uh, the Pasco County Commission, um, giving us somewhat of a position on this thing. Number two, Mr. Trask has already um, clarified that by Pasco County ordinance, we are not an affected party under their definition. 
And, um, but I was going to ask Mr. Trask, is it, would, is it something that we could ask the, com the commission to, to um, deem us an affected party or to, uh, um, um, to uh, give us affected party status in this matter? It's possible they could consent to that. I'm not sure that there is a zoning change. Um, it looks to me like the documents that I've just seen, it's a lease. So um, I'm not really sure whether they were going to have a quasi-judicial hearing on that particular that, issue. Yeah, so if, it, yeah. if they don't, then it doesn't matter whether we're affected parties or not, but we would have be able to weigh in on it as a public, a member of the public as far as what our position would be. I think that they would expect that from the city. Okay, yeah. all right. Um, so that would be the one thing, do a little more, um, maybe some research on that. Uh, Ms. Vincent just raised her hand. You want to come forward, Ms. Vincent, please? Yeah. As I read through the proposal, they at a minimum are going to need to seek a land use map change to their comprehensive plan. So, and I do believe under Florida statute, then us and or the county will get will get notice for that. Would that would we be a um, an affected party just because we're noticed or just? Uh, I'll have to defer to the city attorney on, on whether or not we would be an affected party. So it's a land use. It's not a zoning. It wouldn't be quasi-judicial. Um, so you, know, you can ask to receive the information to be considered an affected party, but they may not treat it as a quasi-judicial hearing at all. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, and I don't recall if, it, if a zoning change is in, in tow or not. I do specifically remember that the a land use map change was necessary. Well, I know they're planning a, a site plan review, the whole thing, as far as a number of things. So, um, and um, for the record, um, Pasco Commission uh, Chairperson, Ms. Uh, Catherine Starkey, has agreed to meet with me on Thursday. So at least I can share with her some of the results from this meeting and, and our residents and what I gleaned from Facebook. And, um, um, you know, it, it, there's a number of other things in the backup that I've provided, but let's go to the public first on this. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that you're sitting patiently here wanting to get up and make a comment. So anybody that wishes to make a comment, please come forward. Hi again, David Ballard Geddes Jr. Uh, Georgia Avenue in Palm Harbor. I, I proposed at Honeymoon Island 13, 14 years ago was a similar situation where a uh, third party wanted to impost a uh, campground. And I believe uh, um, uh, uh, Mike F Fasano and uh, Richard C C Curran um, stood in opposition for one reason or another as to why they, they uh, um, didn't uh, approve this, this campground that was wanted uh, imposed to, uh, to have rights to uh, <clears throat> develop in Honeymoon Island. I wonder if the situation here could be relative um, under the same circumstances to be denied. Um, in that it's a park um, and, uh, and the restaurant would be, um, in a sense, an impost of such. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Geddes. Good evening. I'm Joanne Lane, 2141 Waterview Drive in Halliday. Um, I use the boat ramp right there and cloak weekly. And uh, I don't know if I'm in favor or not because I need more information and see exactly where it's supposed to be. I looked at your map and stuff, and it just seems like it's in such a congested area because I'm there and I'm watching the boats come in, the boats come out, the jet skis, the people swimming right there. And I know how that current is, especially when the tide goes down. And, and I'm just wondering if it is a good idea to have it there. I mean, I would love to have a restaurant with a nice boat, you know, slips and stuff, but I don't know about that right there. That is right there on the corner and it's heavily congested. I think it's gonna be bad for the boaters who are trying to launch their boats unless they are proposing to move the launch someplace else. I mean, and the parking. There's not a lot of room for the parking. So I just wanted to make that statement and see Thank what you. happens. 
It's nice seeing you. Is there any other public comment? Um, IT, are there any remote access comments concerning this matter? If anyone would like to speak on the side, please raise your hand. You'll be allowed in. And we do have a raised hand at this time, sir. I'll allow the first person. To Hello, Sharon Landrum, 45 West MLK, Junior Drive. Thank you, Mayor, for bringing this to the attention of Tarpon Springs because I, I frankly, until I saw your Facebook page, Facebook post, had no idea this was being proposed or considered by Pasco County. So I do appreciate that you shared that with us. As, as frequent voters and users of the Anclote River, um, I think that would be my worst nightmare to have a development like that at the mouth of the river. We rarely use our boat on the weekends just because of the congestion there is now. And um, I can't even imagine trying to use our boat if there was a development like that on the river, but I don't think it would be environmentally friendly. Um, so if the city could um, be an affected party or if you could uh, visit with the Pasco County Commissioners and and um, relay the our our um, concern about this kind of development. I would I would appreciate that, and I'm sure every voter and every person who uses the river and the commercial um, the commercial ventures uh, the all of uh, all of our sponge dock businesses that use the river, I just, you know, so I do appreciate this and um, we're behind you 100%. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Landrum. And we do not have another race hand at this time. Okay, let's go to the commission. Um, Vice Mayor Lunt. I, I don't know even where to start with this. It's, uh, overly excessive as far as land use. It's at a environmentally and a river management uh, access point that's not favorable from my opinion anyway. It's close to the outfall or intake canal for the flower plant. It's at the choke point for, for a no wake zone um, at the mouth of the river that's barely con controlling the congestion that we have now. Um, you heard the the person talk about the weekends. Um, I'm an avid boater. I, I, I'm out there a lot. I see it all the time. It's just, it's uh, a little bit un, unwieldy as it is. Um, probably in other circumstances, you need to realize that the company that is proposing this is a company who has built its reputation on motorcycle bars. Um, if you've been to their facility on 49th Street, and I have because I went down there just to check it out, it's huge. They have an extensive concert lineup. They mentioned in, in the back plans for, for this particular project eight times a year, but I've taken a look at some of their lineups. Their lineups run from 2.30 in the afternoon till I, well after midnight in some cases. Yeah. It's, I you know, haven't gone as far as checking out everything, but from a noise perspective, our residents across the river are gonna have to listen to that. We've had to put stops from where I am on the river on, on um, the noise coming from Rusty Bellies when they had live music outside. We had to get them to tone it down because it was, you could literally walk out my front door and, and hear it clearly. That kind of stuff is, if we're not an affected party, that kind of stuff is gonna to happen to everybody that's, that's across um, the river from, from them at that point. And it's, it's gonna be untenable. It's gonna end up being a lot of anger. Um, my other concern would be the type of, of crowds that they're they're planning on, I mean, 
it's coming off like a really nice development, mixed family, we have beaches, we have this, outside of the fact that, you know, 70% of it is parking lot, and you've got a 22,000 square foot restaurant that's gonna serve alcohol, and you have a company that's known and actually pushed the marketing concept within their plan of the fact that they run the, the Orange County Cycle Shop, or the Orange County Chopper Shop, actually. It's, it's, anyway, I'm, I'm frustrated, it's not appropriate, but I don't believe we can do anything until we either establish ourselves as an affected party with Pasco County, or establish ourselves as an affected party with the waterways, because it's definitely gonna be a waterway problem. No, I agree. That's all I have to say. Um, thank you, Commissioner Eisen. <clears throat> In addition, I agree with what Vice Mayor just uh, said, um, I am an affected party. I live directly across from Ms. Vicky's. So I do hear the uh, Ms. Vicky's, uh, depending on how, which way the wind is going, I, I could be drinking outside my house with Ms. Vicky's. Um, it, it's, it's going to be a noise issue. It's going to be um, congestion at its best. Um, I don't know if they're how they're going to get this through the Army Corps of Engineers um, because they're planning on changing things there. Um, that's just the thing. But I mean, this could be something three years, four years, five years out to have it made. Um, they're going to have to be very comfortable in filling a 22,000 square foot um, restaurant. What concerns me is how long it takes to fail. And then you have a empty box there. Um, but they're not contributing to our dredging or our re you know river. We're paying it all and they're getting the benefit of that. Um, as was said earlier, it's somewhat of a nightmare to launch a boat there. It's extremely steep, uh, very steep to launch a boat down there. Um, so I don't know if they're planning on doing new boat launches, um, but one of the pictures showed what looked like a, uh, a lookout point, I don't know, yeah. that, that jutted out into blocking um, over three quarters of the channel. I had no idea where that came from, what that was. Actually, when I saw it, I didn't even think that was the location because it's not there. So how are you planning on putting that, that lookout point um, there? So I'm not in agreement to any of it, and I would be willing to do any and everything in our power as a city or as a resident of Tarpon Springs to, to not so much to stop it, but to make it fit the area. That's... I'm not against things, um, more so the shoe has to fit, and this doesn't fit. Thank you. Commissioner Curias. I don't have much input. I'm just looking towards uh, the leadership and wisdom of this board to give a direction if there is one to go with. So. <coughs> um, the, 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 number, the, the main word that I've heard is intensity. That's the thing that people are scratching their heads over. Uh, why so much? And um, it's a 10-year lease. I haven't read the details on it. Um, it's hard for me to imagine that you would invest that much for a 10-year lease. Um, the, um, I think that a number of these things that are being proposed are just that proposals. They haven't been approved yet. I think the music is going to be problematic um, for us for this gentleman right there, because they're not going to be calling Pasco County. <laughs> they're going to be calling City Hall and wanting us to do something about it. And um, so um, I, I'm going to, and th that's the other thing, even though um, perhaps not, or not under Pasco County is there, is there, and for example, going back to this, um, um, you know, concerned citizens lawsuit that we've got where the courts did not deem them an affected party. Is there some case law that we could rely on if, if Pasco County chose not to um, um, 
uh, deem us of an affected party, if you will, um, that we could make an argument based on some legal basis? Yes, the Renard decision, Renard versus Dade County, which is the key case that we look at when we determine whether or not we're an affected party and we have to meet those four requirements. It's the same that we had before when we talked about them with concerned citizens. And those are the proximity of the property, uh, to the city's property, to the property to be um, zoned or rezoned, the character of the neighborhood, including the existence of common restrictive covenants and setback requirements. The third requirement under that uh, uh, case is the type of proposed change. And the fourth is whether or not the city is those among uh, entitled to receive notice under the ordinance that they have in the, in the county. Um, and although each one of those factors are pro probative, none is dispositive of the standing issue. Um, but that is the case that we would argue. Um, do you do you, I mean, have you looked at it? Do you think there may be some merit to it or? Um, I don't know that the city owns any property close by. And so I'm not, I, I don't, at this point, the answer is no. I don't think that okay. we could meet any of those requirements. Okay. But that, that's, 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 that's the case that is pivot, pivotal. Okay. Um, there's some information I'm going to need to get, like the economic, the economic analysis that we did for the river, uh, that sort of thing. I'll get with you tomorrow on that. Um, and that's helpful, what you just said as well. Okay. Um, the, um, um, Ms. Vincent, do you have anything else to offer on this? Um, have, have you had any conversations with any of your uh, colleagues up there? Or? Uh, I, no, not, not in Pasco County. I did forward um, all the information that I had to uh, my contacts in Pinellas County. Yeah. Um, curious if they had gotten any notice or, or were aware of it, and they were not as well other than when I saw it in the paper. So um, Glenn has it on his radar as well. So, so I suspect that I mean, the county's the directly abutting jurisdiction there you, um, as opposed you, to us. Do you get a, I mean, do you have a sense from them that they're going to take a, 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 you know. I, no, I have no sense at all. I, we just, I just discussed, just emailed back and forth with them whether or not um, they had received any notice. I can, I can follow up um, with, uh, with Carol, Carol Strickland, the, the planning director there and see if, you know, usually the county is fairly proactive about taking a stance on something like that. Um, that's that close to their that, jurisdiction. I mean, the meeting on Thursday is just mm -hmm. kind of a courtesy to express where we are. I think once we get into the process, I think we'll have a little more active and maybe even partner with Pinellas County on it. Um, but that yet remains to be seen how all that's going to evolve and for mm -hmm. us as well. Um, City Manager, of course, do you have anything to offer? Anything? Um, no, but we'll, we'll keep We'll keep a track on everything going on in Paso County. Again, we'll follow up with Pinellas County and and uh, see if we can join in some efforts. Okay. Can we? Can we? Yeah, can I make a ahead. suggestion? Can we also follow up with uh, FWC with the Fish and Wildlife Conservation because they're basically once this place is open and operating, they've just trashed our estuary. Fish are not going to come upstream it, it, if they have to go past it, that. It's so. I mean. It's disheartening. I mean, I've had conversations with the tour boat owners in Tarpon Springs, and um, basically they advised me that they were told by Clearwater Aquarium, which is our dolphin uh, you know, experts in the uh -huh. area, that there's 18 full-time uh, dolphin that live at the mouth of the river, marker four. And I'm not sure what all this is going to do to the f quote. And then I've got the name fortuitously at the uh, splash event that we had. We had the Clearwater Aquarium there. I went over there and they gave me the name of their research director, what I'm going to call tomorrow, and see whether they have anything on that. But these are the sort of things that, quite frankly, it's um, we are to um, Pasco County as what we are to Pinellas County. We're at the end of the road for yeah. Pinellas County and we're at the end of the road for Pasco yeah. County. I mean, really, yeah. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, well, fortunately, we've got this extremely valuable asset called the Anglo River that is, is, is basically a, a very, you know, monetarily economic, everything else that goes to that, recreation, everything is so instrumental to us. And so that's pretty much the situation where we're in right now. And uh, I think if 
this proposal was some county abutting St. Petersburg or something like that, <laughs> you'd have a different, uh, you know, kind of um, activity. And I really appreciate all the residents that are here this evening and everybody that's responded on the uh, on the Facebook. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. Um, I'll, I'll figure if, if unless the commission wants to give me some clear direction. As far as a, a letter or something like that, I'll I'll put something together with my thoughts and and I'll certainly provide you all copies of it. But we're talking about uh, the day after tomorrow uh, to meet with uh, Commissioner Starkey. Oh, wonderful! And then um, she's going to have a number of people in her in her um, from her staff with her. Um, I'm going to talk to the city manager and see if there's somebody that I can take along with me as well. Uh, I, I think the, the city manager might have a conflict that day, but I'm going to, we'll double check on that tomorrow. But um, we unfortunately, we have check with FWC really quick. Well, we can. I mean, that uh, we can do that. We sure. should be doing yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. If we can yeah. before this. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty well versed with. For example, the Army Corps does have setbacks on the river. I think it's like 120 feet. Um, you have to have a setback from any kind of a structure. Um, so there are those, but they do waive those. But sometimes in a case like this, there's seagrasses nearby. I mean, there's all kinds of things that are nearby. Spanish Well is right there. I don't understand. They, they've shown the restaurant right where they've got, quote, the historic location for, for Spanish Well which is the one that goes back to the uh, 1400s that the conquistadors used to get their fresh water from. So I, I have no, I mean, these are, I'm hoping that the county has thought through this, but I, I'm not sure that they have, because again, we're at the extreme end of Pasco County, and, and I don't know that, they, uh, that they've thought all Remind that through. Remind Bailey's Bluffs is gonna turn into Bailey's Boat Ramp. <laughs> yes, so is there anything else for the commission? Um, unless y'all want to give me some direction, I'll just put something uh, together and, and report back to you after the meeting. Okay? Sounds All right. good to me. That's it on that item. Um, does that end the agenda? We have an addendum. Oh, we have an addendum. What is that? Um, this is approval for the mayor to sign an artwork donation from Christopher Still and Kelly Victor. Oh, yes, thank you. We should have done that earlier, right? No, That's no, okay. it, it was um, miscellaneous. Okay. Yeah, it's it's there. Somewhere. Um, you want to explain that? Yeah, it, as we said, um, and you'll see it in the future. You know, we're working on a new th uh, uh, Christopher Still display at the Heritage Museum um, that's going to be, I think, big. Um, these are pieces that he needs to move. Obviously, you know his projects he's on. One of these is a, a tremendously big, and he needs to get them moved. Um, so this is just a start. Again, the board, we're going to have a lot more contact. We'll bring you a lot more about what the whole exhibit and what everything is. But these are two pieces of artwork he wants to donate to the city, you know, the praise on. Um, it was drawn up by the city attorney, um, and it, it requires the mayor's signature. So because there's agreement like this, I'm asking the board of commissioners to give the mayor permission to sign to accept this donation of two pieces of art, beautiful and historic Tarpon Springs. That's the big 103 by 103 and the Anco Lighthouse frame charcoal painting. Um, and again, this is just the start of some of the things we're going to be acquiring from not only Christopher Still, but some people who've brought Christopher Still's um, works and wants to donate them to somewhere like that to display. Um, I think it's going to be big for us, and uh, this is a start, these two pieces. Okay, thank you. Um, let me go to public comments on that. Are there any public comments? Um, IT, are there any remote access public comments? If anyone online would like to speak on this item, please raise your hand and we'll be allowed to talk. And we do not have any raised hands at this time, sir. Thank you. Um, commissioners, um, Vice Mayor Lund. Mark, did I, did I hear you say that we have to move these? Was that we physically have to move them? Yes, we have to bring them from his studio on Lemon Street to the oh, Heritage okay. Museum. Oh, okay. So, I, yeah, it sounded like we already had them mounted somewhere. Not sell them. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> to, no, we need to get them out of his studio on Lemon Street and get them over to the Heritage Center. Oh, okay. We're going to strap them to the top of your vehicle. <laughs> Not that big one. <laughs> yeah, 103 by 103. Yeah, not is that a, big one. <laughs> it's a pretty big one, and I'm assuming at the price that was 
that was uh, appraised for it, we're not going to do this uh, with two guys in a truck. No, in fact, we're watching how he does the hospital. We're going to watch the process of uh, moving the hospital one to get a good idea before we, we move ours. So, Would it not be a good idea to have a company that's actually it may be after we watch that process, after we actually experienced after we, in this, after we observe that this. process and observe it, that may be the case. I'd much rather spend a few thousand dollars and have it intact. We, we might do that. No more further, no further questions. Okay. Oh, there you are. Um, do you have anything, Commissioner Eisner? No. Okay. Commissioner Kulias. Thankful to accept uh, Christopher Stills' artwork and the valuations are just uh, incredible. It's awesome. Okay, I don't have anything. Um, we have a motion and a second. Motion to approve the mayor to sign this document. Okay, we have a second. Second. Okay, roll call please. Commissioner Kuyas? Yes. Commissioner Eisner? Yes. Vice Mayor Lund? Yes. Mayor Vatikiotis? Yes. Okay, that ends the um, agenda. Everything. And, and I'm sorry, the, yes, the agenda. Let's go to uh, staff comments. Chief Young. Uh, no comments, sir. Thank you. Um, City Attorney Trask. No comments. Thank City you. City Manager LaCourse. Uh, I'm glad some of you could make it to the Echo Fest. I know it was a busy day Saturday, but um, we really like if, if those, some of you may remember, we got rained out last year. We got defeated by COVID the two before that. So what was a small event four years ago, since we're bringing it back and what had happened, we wanted to bring it as a big event. And uh, I think we had a lot of participation of city departments, city clerk's office, um, planning. We had a lot of city departments out there. We had a lot of people like the Florida Aquarium. Um, we had a great variety. We had two big fun slides for kids. And I think it was a, a great eco fest and uh, one of the bigger events we're going to keep expanding on um, for next year. So that's great. That's it. I have no comments. Nothing. Thank you. Ms. Jacobs. Okay. Um, Vice Mayor Lund, do you have anything? I have no comments. Commissioner Eisner. I do. It always cracks me up that when we do something so nice, that there's always somebody on Facebook that has to complain about something. And I just want to thank the staff. There was a lot of hard work that went in. Everything had to be set up. It was a beautiful event. It was a little too warm, but we don't control that. Um, but I mean, there were just comments of like, you know, th that the city manager and the city commissioners decide to make two functions the same day. and. It hindered people parking and, you know, and then you had the people that were sitting there going, you know, you just wanted free parking and, you know, you, you had to walk or pay $5. It's just, it was a beautiful event all day long. And I just wish that people would more so just appreciate what the city does. Um, both events, I was at both of them. They were both great. Um, I saw city manager, I saw the city clerk, I saw everybody there, our police force was there, the fire department was there. It was just a great, great people were happy. I mean, you know, nobody had to pay anything. It was just, the parking lot was full, the splash park was full, everything was working, there were no issues. But Facebook some days needs to just burn, boo. <laughs> it's just some people, you just can't make them happy. Um, and then I was at uh, the Hippie Fest afterwards, and, you know, it's a lot of hard work. The merchants work very hard, and I commend them. I commend the staff because, you know, it's funny. I went by there the next morning, and it was just clean as a whistle. Everything was cleaned up. The city looked back as, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that do a lot of hard work here, and you know, if we don't recognize that, uh, shame on us because they really do a very hard job. You know, all I got to do was go there and 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 see it all. That's it. I didn't do the setup, so I do want to thank you and thank you and everybody going there. You know, the kids came back with free gifts, um, little trinkets that you know made them so very happy and. Uh, you know, some people did actually put down that they were very thankful for what the good things the city does. So, you know, those are the people I, 
I hit likes on the, the negative ones. You know, there was no overlap. It was 10 to 2 and 2 to 10. You know, it was, it was I think it was well orchestrated. So I commend you all. Commissioner Kuyas. It was a great weekend with a lot of activities that were hosted by the city. I did have a chance to go by and see Hippie, uh, Hippie Fest and the streets of the Sponge Docks were packed. Um, but I did want to take this time to thank the city manager for, uh, we di I did reach out to him in regards to having a AED installed over at the sports complex, the defibrillator, which, uh, and uh, the city manager was able to get it done very fast and just in time for the football season for the youth and just want to say thank you, so. Thank you. Um, I have a couple of things. One, um, with Commissioner Eisner's uh, comments concerning the um, uh, adjustment, cost of living adjustment, um, I, if he could get with you and if you could write a memorandum explaining what the concept is for the commission so we can all understand. I think it's just important that we exchange ideas and and um, I've, I've already mentioned to Commissioner Eisner I wasn't quite following what he was looking at but I'm sure there's there's a good basis to it. I just, at it, 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 a meeting like this, it's hard to, to try and understand that. So if you could do that. Um, the other uh, item is that um, we've got the VIP or the uh, lobby opening at the hospital. I think it's September 7th. I, if you could, commission could plan on being there. Um, the, um, there is a, a, an event that's being planned for that, if you could be there as well uh, for that. I think everybody's confirmed they're going. Pardon me? I think everybody's confirmed they're doing, going because I have to do the introduction to Citizens Academy for, for <laughs> so. Okay, good, everybody. <laughs> in in yeah. place, since everybody's confirmed with Trish they're going, so I'm gonna fill in, I'm good. gonna be the fill-in introducer at the, okay. the one for cultural things, the, as if I fit in for the, the night that's cultural, but I'll, I'll wing it, so. Well, if you want to skip, skip dinner, we'll, we'll keep a drink for you. All right, sounds good. Okay. And um, <laughs> uh, the reserve. other thing is that, that um, it's been very hot, <laughs> And um, we've had some storms, and um, Tarpon Springs is just full of troopers as far as these special events, extremely hot. Uh, that's the other part, not just organizing them, but organizing them in this heat. And, and um, what the, the three merchants don't tell you, the Merch Association people, they're there from about one in the morning trying to get things ready for the next day. That's just the... The, the, the envelope that we give them for getting their special events open and then they don't go home until everything's cleaned up as well. So it, there's a lot to getting these things, these events um, uh, going. And I'm glad to see the chamber has this uh, Thanksgiving event that they're doing. And, and um, so we're expanding our events. I'm very happy to see all that. Um, I was both at the splash event and at the um, and, and Mr. Eisner did get it. Our Commissioner Eisner did get his uh, uh, free lemonade and hot dogs for the kids. Hot and, dog meal, yes. Uh, <laughs> so I was happy to see that and and um, and was glad to see uh, a lot of smiling children there as well. That's all I have. It's 10:01. Meeting adjourned. Good work.